Welcome you all to Rivals on Bikes. Hey, it's us Rivals and Rob Deep. We're playing Kids on Bikes, sponsored by Blue Microphone. Um, we're very pumped to have you all. Uh, why don't we just go around and introduce ourselves, starting with Sharif. Oh. All right. Oh, oh. Try now. Hello. Testing. One, two, three. Are we there? C can y'all hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. All right. I fixed uh, it. All good. Hand. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. So uh, my, my name is Sharif. He him. Uh, I I I am playing redacted uh, because, uh, <laughs> because we are building today, so yes. we don't know yet. Um, and I'm really excited. I've heard. A lot about this game. Um, I've, I've, you know, I've uh, s seen some other people run it, so I'm excited to see what Masood has planned for us. Yes, I can't wait to take you all through it. All right, yeah. Tanya. Hey, I'm Tanya. I have no idea what I'm doing today, so this is going to be an interesting <laughs> journey. Uh, so pronouns she, her, cipher tier everywhere on in the internets, and uh, I'm excited slash scared to see what happens today. It's the right energy to carry. I'm very pumped. I'm going to use that. It's going to be good. <laughs> Latia up next. It's me, Latia, playing someone who is d desperately going to try to ride a Huffy because <laughs> Huffy bikes are the best bikes in, from like 30 years ago. Um, hi, uh, pronouns are she, her, and I'm real excited to play kids on bikes. We're excited to have you. And the cool thing about this game is we could make you ride a Huffy bike. That is not inconceivable. They have that in the world of our imaginations. Uh, Brandon, you're up next. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Uh, as everybody has said, I don't know who I'm playing as well, so we'll see. <laughs> um, actually, right before uh, the game, I actually biked all the way home, so I was trying to get in the mood Ooh. we be doing today. Get so I'm yeah, excited Ooh. to see what's going to happen. Method I, acting. That yeah. is, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Got my little bike, and I was trying to get it before the rain, you know? Heck yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Daniel Day-Lewis is modeling your technique right now, honestly. <laughs> um, but yeah, guys, hey, I'm Masood. I'll be GMing uh, this game. Uh, you can find me on the internet at Maroud Boy, uh, where you can see your tags. My pronouns are he, him. Um, I'm a big fan of uh, Kids on Bikes. I love the system. It's very collaborative in nature and kind of coming from my wheelhouse of improv and comedy, very much of group narrative um yeah and i just want to give another shout out to blue microphones all of our audio equipment that we're using today was provided to us by blue so if you're wondering wow how do i get my voice to mimic the smooth dulcet tones i'm hearing right now uh, and you don't have a time machine to go back and be a radio dj for four years then your best next bet is get a blue microphone um nice. but yeah <laughs> Just doing a little bit of copy reading, you know how it goes. Uh, but yeah, let's get into it. So uh, Kids on Bikes, the way it's designed is it is basically like create your own Stranger Things. Um, you build a story together. It takes place usually in kind of like a rural setting, someplace that's not too far from um, an urban environment, but usually someplace kind of quiet. Um, but the first thing you do with any tabletop role playing as you do uh, is you want to set your boundaries. So at least for us, we reach out to one another about our lines and veils, um, and we're aware of that as we build the game. But if anything comes up that we're uncomfortable with, we're going to just mention it to one another and move around it because the game is ultimately all of us designing it together. The first thing that we got to do for our game, though, is, hey, where are we playing it? Where is this game taking place? We're going to be building the world together. Um, and so from the book... Kids on bikes should probably be set in a small town at any point in history um, before you had a video camera in the pocket at all times. It should be played in a place remote enough that the rest of the world um, just doesn't care about it, but close enough that, let's say, government helicopters could be there within three hours. Everyone in the town probably knows everyone else, for better or for worse, and people look out for each other, but rumor also travels fast. Ultimately, this is all up to you. The beauty of the game is that we can set it up any way we want. Um, if we want to do something set in the current time frame, we totally can. Um, I also want to say um, there's a lot here in the game and its design that, like, uh, 
we can play around with what I will say uh, the era that the game takes place in. Um, mm-hmm. But like, let's let's just get it off to the start. Um, it's all about collaborative creation. So everyone at the table has a say in the world that we build and what it looks like, um, allowing us to have investment from the jump when we start playing. So first things first, you guys ready? This is where the input starts in from you all. Yeah. Uh, let's ask, what tone do we want to set for this game? Are we goofy? Are we serious? Somewhere in the middle? Mm. Somewhere in I the middle. I think in the middle, right? In the middle? Yeah, I think cool. in the middle. <clears throat> yeah. Perfect. As, as much in the middle as a kid can think they are. Yeah. I guess. yeah. Perfect. Because <laughs> uh, awesome. I know when I used to think I was serious as a kid, it was really goofy. <laughs> thought I was being serious. <laughs> well, that could be a problem for your character, you know? No one takes you serious. You're the boy who cries wolf. Except when there's a slime monster coming out of the sewer. Um, I mean, I would I would cry slime then. Cry slime. <laughs> no. yeah. All right. Next yeah. thing uh, we're gonna ask <laughs> <laughs> is what time period does our game take place in? Is it the early eighties, sixties, nineteen twenties, seventeen seventy six? Um, Ooh, too far. No, too far. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> so I, 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 the great thing about this game is we design it. Uh, if you couldn't tell, folks who are watching, uh, there's a lot of melanin at the table. Uh, and I don't want to have us have the usual problem of traveling back in time uh, to the U.S. when things weren't great for those without seasoning. So mm-hmm. uh, we're in a game of <laughs> make-believe, mm-hmm. and I'm choosing to believe that this game is devoid of racially charged prejudice. So if we want to do something in the like early centennial America, we can do it in a certain way. Um, if you want to just stick to the current time frame, it's all up to you all. Uh, but... Hey, I'm going to leave it to you. What era do you want to set this game in? Mm, I'd say the 60s. The 60s. Okay, the cool. 60s. Um, Ooh, oh, groovy. I'm here for it. I mean, I was thinking the 80s. Okay. I'll do 80s too. I'm like 80s and, you know, 60s or 80s. Cool. Yeah, 80s. I don't know. I, I can I can go either way. I, I, think, I think 80s is kind of the classic... Uh, Spielberg era, I guess. Uh, yeah, okay. That yeah. let's go with let's go with that. It is perfect. Uh what year in the eighties do you want it to take place? Mid oh, wow. Late? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Specific year. Specific year, just for wow. some details. I'm not gonna get too particular about it. Like if you guys mentioned that you have like a toy Millennium Falcon, I was like, Well that is Star Wars didn't come out till nineteen eighty six and the game's taking place in nineteen eighty like I don't care. Oh my god. But if it's something like <laughs> super relevant, I'm I might draw yeah. on some things for flavor. Yeah. Like what movie came out that year? I'm gonna ask you guys like that you guys saw over the summer. Um uh, but yeah, so uh give me a number one through ten, Latia. Actually, zero through nine. That's that's how that's how this works. Oh, <laughs> uh, you're muted. Yeah, you're muted. Oh. It's this silly little mic. Uh, I'm looking at it like, oh, uh, nine is nine. my answer. My answer is nine. Heck yeah, nine. Um, so nineteen eighty nine. Perfect. The number that, another cause, summer. Because that good. way we're all alive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because yeah, when you start saying the sixties, I was like, well. <laughs> That's a little too far back. Yeah. <laughs> true, true. We could all do gross yeah. misinterpretations of history. I'm here for it. Um, sure. All right. Now let's get to the questions about the town. And for these, I'm going to ask each of you all two questions, one at a time. And we're just going to go around the table and answer them. Um, so, Sharif, what is mm-hmm. the name of the town and state where our story takes place? Um. Z- does it have to be a real nah, dude. place? You just made make uh, it up. Uh, I'll say uh, Corrington. Uh, and it has to be in the States, kind of. Uh, um, yeah, I think for us, for what we okay, can draw yeah. on comfortably for our 80s culture. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Corrington, uh, New York. So, like, upstate New York. Upstate Ooh. New York. Hell yeah. yeah, upstate New York. Like, I, I was I was thinking you were gonna say like it felt like a New Jersey ish type place. Yeah. So like, you said New York. It actually I was does like, sound like a New Jersey place, <laughs> actually. Like that might be my Jersey bias coming through. It does sound <laughs> like a it sounds like a central Jersey right. or South Jersey place. Heck yeah. Upstate New York. Corrington. And I'm I'm spelling that with a C or a K? Uh C. 
C O R R I N G. I want to avoid as many K's as possible. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Me here. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And. And with that, perfect time to take the mic away from Sharif. Uh, Tanya, what industry yes. is a, our location best known for? Like, what does everybody do in this town primarily? Oh, God, you're asking the city kid that didn't have to deal with a small town that everyone just worked in the same place. But use, use, uh, some, use some stereotypes, yeah. uh, you know? We, we can uh, build it to our we can We can subvert them. Everyone yes. works at the local... Um, legally distinct computer company oh, okay. that, that may have three blue letters for their logo. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, the IBS computer company. Oh, yeah. I like it. This is this is like why, Grand Theft Auto. Like, <laughs> why <laughs> IBS <laughs> though? <laughs> why IBS? We, I love that. We said <laughs> the, the, the tone, bowel the tone <laughs> was in between somewhere, and I'm 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 taking this. This is my middle line about that. Why not EBM? <laughs> we can go. E wow. you go <laughs> I was just thinking more what IBS actually stands for. Yeah, that's right. No, that's what I'm saying. Of course. Uh, uh, it could be like the EDM company and they just EDM music. They're just EDM oh my music God. playing what, like while people are working. Well, no, no, real. For, so, so what do you guys want to set it as? I don't, I don't want to take. No, it's the computer company. But I like Sharif's idea of like yeah. they're, they're one of their subsidiaries is like EDM tracks and EDM machinery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, heck yeah! Uh, awesome. And then I'm gonna go to Latia next. Um, so that's what everyone usually like thinks about with Corrington, the thing about the EDM computer company, um, what is the town famous for? Like, what do they pride themselves in? Ooh, um, I think like we are the EDM computer company town, but I think we do this really small, but like really crowded fair oh, every year. Heck yeah that like brings in people from all over new york nice Classic. so like is it a summer fair is it a winter fair like what season it's a it's a fall festival oh, nice you get out of uh new york head out to see the leaves change mm -hmm. yes. um oh my god what do you got pumpkin rides uh, sorry like hay yeah rides. yeah you know, like like hay rides and um like if they time it just right, like the three days where you actually start to see the leaves change, it's like a whole, it's a thing. Oh yeah. Yeah, I love it. I'm gonna say there's like, ooh, you guys, every year the haunted house wants to be better and better. And honestly, sometimes it's great, sometimes it isn't, but it is a big sting. <laughs> cool. All right, um, let's move on to Brandon. Mm -hmm. What is our town infamous for? Ooh. Ooh. Well, like, was a scandal that happened in town, or was it like, did a murder take place 15 years ago um, that people still talk about? Like, yeah. I will say, um, oh, like the local mayor had an affair with like one of the teachers oh. of the high school. Oh, oh my god! Ooh. Drama, oh, scandal, drama, drama. Affair <laughs> with wow. one of the teachers. I'm gonna ask a, a tough question to you. Mm-hmm. Was it, did it used to be their teacher? Ooh, no, man. no, they're the same oh age. My God. Yeah, they're the same age. They're like, same age. The, the, the mayor's, like, daughter goes to this high school, uh -huh. and then, like, you know, they, the teacher and the mayor both married. But got it, got it. Secret got it. affair. Perfect. And the daughter found out. If I want to, you know, there. Yeah, and the daughter mm -hmm. leaked Ow. it. Hell yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I love that question, though. The same teacher, like, yeah. uh, like it was some youngish teacher. Oh man, that's crazy. <laughs> All right. Crazy. Now back to you, Sharif. How is the yeah. town doing economically and why? Is it prospering? Is it floundering? Is it stagnant? I'd say it's kind of stagnant. Like I'd say that it used to be sort of the leading, mm -hmm. one of the leading computer like manufacturing places. Mm -hmm. It's not quite on the down. It's, it's like not like us you know, a steel town where all the plants close, mm -hmm. but it is one where everyone knows that it's reaching capacity and they're looking for ways to attract other industry or go into other, you know, um, they're like looking for ways for like new things to get, the, the government is looking for new, new things to either attract like new businesses there um, or something like that. Wow. Perfect. 
Um, awesome. So it used to be do- booming. Let me just repeat it back so I got yes. it. Yes. Used to be booming, but now everyone knows it's kind of reaching capacity. Um, yeah. And it's lo- like EDM isn't really looking for new hires the way they were. Um, the like, yes. facility is kind of set. Um, and they, local governments are looking for like new things to attract businesses. Um, yeah. Awesome. Uh, Tanya, what yes. is a notable local organization? And this could be like a charity. It could be like a parent group. It could be something that's like good. It can be bad. Just what do, yeah. What's a notable local organization? Um, I'm going to, I'm going to go the way people probably don't expect and say, there's a, a well-known gang you know for this town oh uh some of them are are techies that were former edm employees and they got let go in a in a very suspicious way so now they're like on this crusade so kind of like you know if you played Watch Dogs, so they're almost like dead sick but in the so they carry around floppies and like these two <laughs> meg, <laughs> I love these, like two meg uh, memory sticks. Yeah, retro oh, hacking, I'm here for. Oh it. wow, <laughs> phone oh, freaking. Wow. Yeah. Phone. Oh my god. And yeah. uh, and they're you know just as a nod back to us, their name is they're just the code name is Rivals. Heck yeah. <laughs> I love that. All my plans fit on 1.44 megabytes. Mm. <laughs> so are they small plans? <laughs> They're big plans. Many kilobytes of plans. Oh my god. Calls. I wouldn't do a video god. game load like that. Heck yeah. <laughs> uh, so Retro it's a, dead sec. Local organizations, a well-known gang. Some of them are techies. They were let go from EDM, and now they're raging against the company. Uh, the gang is called Rivals. Yes. Heck right. yeah. I like that. Um, let's see. Uh, Latia, what is a notable landmark? Like, what's something uh, about the town that's pretty notable? Like, hey, we're going to go to blank or something happens here. Um, I'll kind of throw it back to the kind of haunted house idea. Yeah. The house itself is a landmark. Like, it's open to the public year round, except for the, you know, week or two that they've set it up for the haunted house. Oh. Um, it used to be, um, it used to be, I think it used to be like the old town hall. Ooh, town hall that they then converted, but now it's also like a historic landmark. But yep. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Is there like a gift shop in there as well? And like some people who just like treat it as a museum? Yeah. Yeah. And I think like if it were now, there'd probably be like two or three rooms that you could rent out as Airbnbs. Yeah. Um, but for for this it's just, you know, tour the, you know, so and so mansion mm-hmm. and, you know, pick up a, a keychain on your way out. So, uh mm. what is the name of the mansion? Is Oh boy. Yeah. And then if you if oh. we we can throw this to the group as well, if, um, what feels like a right name. But if you got one jumping out of the pocket, yeah, I don't have a name off the off the cuff. So mm-hmm. I feel like it'd be so. This is the old city hall, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it'd be some kind of weird pun on like that Cor- fact. The Corrington, like, yeah, yeah. Like uh, I don't know, uh. hollow. Fear or something. <laughs> That's really bad. Uh, uh, <laughs> no, Corin Hall. Corin Hall. Oh. Corin Hall. Oh. Corin Hall. <laughs> I like that. Th- that sounds like where I used to register Corin for Hall. classes in college. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, it's actually, uh, this is the town um, where Corin Hall was discovered, but it was originally called Corin Hall. Uh, Corin Hall. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, all right, Brandon, you're up next. What is mm-hmm. another notable local landmark? Um, what's uh, like another like place that is important to uh, this town? Uh, I would say uh, a peach farm. A peach farm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A peach farm. A peach farm. Right. Who's it's like uh, one I of? Like it. Yeah. Oh, are you gonna say sorry? No, no, no. no. I, I love oh. it. A, a peach farm in upstate New York, dude. That's a yeah. that's super rare. I'm sure that draws yeah. a little bit of a crowd. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're one of the like the juiciest peaches that like you know, mm. in the United States. So a lot of people go visit to you know take some from there. And all nice. That. Um, what is the name of the farm? 
Um, oh. Yeah. For some reason, Archie's came to mind. Archie. Archie. Archie's, uh, Archie's Peach Archie's. Farm. Yeah. 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 Good old Archie. Good old Archie. <laughs> Archie is a staple in Quarrington. He's lived there for like sixty years. Yeah. Oh, okay. He's still alive. He's still alive. He's still alive. Yeah. Oh. He's still there. <laughs> yeah. He's uh, dating Betty and Veronica. Can't decide. Get out of here. Wow. Wow. Can't uh, decide between the two. Oh God. Okay. Uh, and then uh, this is the last question for all y'all. Um, what is the name of the high school and what is their mascot? Oh God. A parakeet. Just parakeet. Okay, Heck parakeet. Yeah. parakeet. I don't know what the what the name. Okay. Of so, 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 so this town's small enough that there'd be like one high school. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Name. I'm gonna say. Well, we never decided uh, population size, but let's say um, it's a maximum of maybe like five thousand. Yeah, like a yeah. couple thousand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Well, um, if the mascot's the parakeet. Uh, yeah. I mean, Corn High would be kind of boring, I guess. Uh, Corn High, or you could it could be named after a historical figure if you guys want to like uh, make it like Howard Taft High School or. Hmm. Hmm. Oof. I mean, I guess Corn High. I guess we could just Corn High. That. I'm good with that. I was going to say. Like I, I kind of wanted something more creative. I want I something to that give me a uh, alliterative power with the parakeets. I want I want I something think, that I, you, like I, I think it should have the, the parakeets and the peaches somehow. Yeah, <laughs> you know. um, it's a it's a parakeet well, that's eating a peach. Well, that could be the color, like the the school's color, like peach and something else. Um, what about? Perpetual peace and parakeets. Ah, uh, perpetual oh, wow. peace. Oh, wow. Like, uh, what, what, oh, what our lady and, of perpetual peace. Wow, this is like a Catholic yeah. school. Mm. This is like Catholic peach well, parakeet. How about this? It, it, like, it I used to it. be um, the town, obviously, when it first uh, was created, it was like um, Catholic settlers who set up in the area. They built the school. They're called Our Lady of Perpetual Peace. Um, but over time, as it's gone on, um, the names stayed the same but uh, it became a public school for everyone who needed to be there um i actually went to a middle school called uh churchville for a very similar reason uh Ooh. yeah our lady of perpetual peace um, but we just call it perpetual peace. perpetual peace and uh the parakeets eating a peach oh my god guys i'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna hate i'm minute. gonna hate you saying this what about our lady of perpetual peaches our lady of perpetual peaches we definitely need yes. someone to, uh, <laughs> perpetual yes. peach high this, uh, logo perpetual, oh, yes. peach high. perpetual peach high <laughs> perpetual peach high that's yeah. good pph yeah. i like it <laughs> well i think like that could give uh sort of relevance to like archie and archie's family like maybe they have been there like before the um, town was known for EDM. It was a peach farm. It was like people from mm -hmm. all over came here for the peaches. Um, it's once again, why? How are you else are you gonna get peaches if not from Georgia? You go to Corrington. True. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Okay. That's true. It's now, facts. This one, um, I want to take some time for y'all to think about. Everyone is gonna share one rumor about the town because especially uh in a small town rumors drive a lot of what goes on i'm gonna write these rumors down keeping them in mind so they can influence the upcoming game um and though there may be sources for the rumor the player that the players can't even imagine also also not all rumors have any truth to them and we can discuss what that looks like for us, but um, just keep in mind that as long as you're within the bounds of what the group has decided to include in the game, there are no wrong answers. Ooh, what if Archie really isn't related to the Peach Farmer family? He just hap he was like a mass murderer and oh took God. someone's. Look, no, I'm I'm no, going no, no. somewhere. It's, with it's, a, it's no. a rumor. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It's a rumor. It doesn't have to be true. Yeah. And he fled to Covington to escape what he's done. Mm. And he's lived under this false name and false identity all this time. And somehow no one's found all the bodies. 
Nice. Um, come on, a small town rumor like there's that's not good. one. Yes. That's good. I I I like look, that. And this rumor could have no basis in it. It's a rumor, look, Ar right? Look, Ar mm -hmm. Archie raised me. How dare you talk about <laughs> it? Archie? We like haven't that. made our characters yet. <laughs> Ar Archie's no, my surrogate look, dad. How dare the bodies, you? the bodies are how the peaches grow. <laughs> yeah, the mm. bodies are how oh, the peaches grow. Oh my god, that's that's the secret sauce. That's why they're fertilizing so it. Oh um, my god, they're buried under the peach farm. Oh, man, oh man. And uh, not to break the flow, but someone did ask if we had an explanation for kids on bikes uh, in the chat. So uh, I've given oh. my rumor. I will go find uh, the website for it. Yes. Yeah, yeah it's like re Renegade Games. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Uh, uh, ooh, I, love I like that a lot. Um, anyone got else got it. another? Take your time. We can sit on these, like, let what feels good. Um, and they can, uh, yeah. I, I I have a rumor. Okay. Uh, so that scandal that was mentioned. The um, mayor and the teacher. With right? the mayor and the teacher. So it was actually the teacher. Th so. Give me names. There's a rumor. Give, give me names. A rumor. You got uh, name these characters for me. Okay. So the. So the teacher's name is uh, Rachel. Fitwicky. Rachel Fitwicky, cool. Uh, oh my god. And the, I hope you write that down because I'm probably going to forget it every I, time. I, dude, uh, I'm, I'm here. And, and the mayor's name is uh, Noah uh, Bromington. Bromington. Cool. So, Mayor Bromington. Yes. So, so, so there's a rumor that uh, Rachel actually blackmailed... Uh, Mayor Bromington in the like she basically said like I know something about your past and uh you know uh so like uh, she's been making up these rumors about the affair herself Ooh. to Ooh. blackmail him because of something about his past oh okay. in his past that's how the uh affair started yes. allegedly um and uh, just from my knowledge are they now together? Is that what makes this like so juicy? Is that they like, um, like now now they're married. She's the new mayor's wife. Like, that's oh, like, okay, yeah. sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that works. This is this is spicy, scandalous. right? This is spicy, spicy. <laughs> uh, awesome, um, cool. And then, uh, Brandon, Latia. Mm -hmm. Rumors. Mm -hmm. Well, we already went with the murder rumor, so probably not that one. Yeah. Uh, give me a little. I'll let Latia go first. So. Take your time. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this this is session zero, baby. We've got we've got time to build it out and sort of do what we need to do. Mm -hmm. And the first the first biggest step is building our world, and then we're going to decide how we build our characters around it, which feels fun. I love this approach to building a world, by the way. It's, like, asking questions around the... It feels like so around good. Around the horn. Yeah, man. It's cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's awesome. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. I think I got it. Well, Go ahead, Brandon, because I'm still thinking. Uh, there is a local rumor that... Um, let me see. That there is someone who is stealing hearts from the local hospital... Ooh. After people um, have passed, someone is stealing hearts, and they they don't have a clue who or what is doing it. Wow! And it's what? Just the hearts. The rest yeah, of just the body. The, heart. the rest of the body's intact. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, are we and talking they, and, like hearts? Actually, like 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 they've like removed them and they're going to be donated, or people are like no, someone is people's bodies. Yeah, and they're taking it, and what they they oh. leave they leave a rose behind as a mark that that was, oh, was part of sweet. them. Yeah, taking hearts. Sweet. So that that that's how they know it's the same person who's doing it. Oh man, it's a wow. calling card of the murderer. Yeah, so someone is, but they're not even. They're from the hospital. These people are are dead. They're taking yeah. hearts out of cadavers. So is it really murder? Right? Like it's some. That's some, the question. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it. That oh, is. Man. That's the whole thing. Like you know, uh, so they're trying to figure out what is going on and why uh, they're being taken and who is doing it or what thing is doing it. Who is doing it? Uh, I'm gonna have a super tame rumor. Um, go for it. No, no, no. Go for it. No, no, no. Uh, so the main street of Corrington, which is called, 
uh, High Hill Road. High Hill Cause Road. Because it, it, it kind of slants a little bit. Um, hot, high Hill. It's not as high as it, is, as it seems. Uh -huh. um, they say, um, like, it's in, like, some B footage from a movie from the 70s, from, like, the early 70s. But, like, no one can, no one knows what the name of this movie is. No one has a copy of this movie. <laughs> no one has ever been able to find, like, any evidence that someone brought a camera, a, a film crew to Corrington. And it was Ooh. in a movie. No, I, I swear to you. Uh, what's it called? Um, uh, Charlie Chaplin did a bit on this hill. Like, but it was lost exactly. in the transfer from, yeah, I like that. I love it. Oh, thank you for that link, Tanya, that uh, command. You're welcome. I didn't realize I disappeared. My rumor was too Yeah, I was like, wow, that's a rumor for Yo, sure. CIA, CIA was like, we got it, we got it. We got to get this one. <laughs> rumor was too good. The rumor was too good. <laughs> Heck yeah. Um, awesome, guys. Uh, is there anything else? This is like kind of brings us to the end of the story does, uh, or at least the world building. Is there anything else you all want to add? I, I want to go through and read this back to us. So if we want to add a little more depth in any capacity, we can. Um, so we wanted to um, name the town Corrington, New York. It's in upstate New York. Um, the, the town is known for yeah. um, being an EDM computer company. They're now uh, moving on to actually creating uh, electronic dance music. Um, very ahead of its time. Um, is town is famous for the fall festival is there a name for the fall festival or is it just the fall festival it's just the fall festival fall fest yeah 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 when we're in those small towns somebody says the festival and that's like the only thing like happening mm -hmm. so they're like you don't need a name for it yeah people that's don't know what came first Corrington or the fall festival they're like so mm. tied together yeah true mm. cool uh, what is our town infamous for? The local mayor, Noah Bramington, had an affair with one of his teachers, Rachel Fitwicky. Um, they are the same age, but Noah's daughter leaked it. Um, mm -hmm. Perfect. And then um, how is the town doing economically? We know they're stagnant. It used to be booming, but now everyone knows it's kind of reaching its capacity. Um, they're looking to the government. Uh, Noah and his team are looking uh, for new things to attract business there. A local notable organization it are the rivals, a gang uh, who are all techies. They were let go from EDM. They're now raging against the company. Um, and they're using their floppy disk hacking skills uh, to take down this behemoth. Uh, yeah. We got a, a local notable landmark is uh, Corn Hall. Um, it's a haunted house during the fall festival, but the rest of the year... Um, it's a gift shop and museum. It used to be the town hall. It's actually the first building that was established in uh, Cornington was Corn Hall. Um, love it. And no, it was never used to store corn in the winter. People just keep saying that. Yeah. Uh, okay. Another local, uh, notable local landmark is uh, Archie's Peach Farm. Um, it's the juiciest peaches in the U.S. and it's been historically as such. Um, Archie is still alive. Is what is Archie's last name? Is it Archie Peach? Is uh, I don't know. I don't know if anyone knows. Mm -hmm. like, he's yeah. been around so long. Yeah. It's just Ar that's just Archie. He's just old Archie. Old man Archie. Old, Archie. old man Archie. And that feeds into uh, the um, rumor, right, uh, about his background of being a mass murderer. Because it's no one calls him Mister Peach. They call him Old Man Archie. He's like, oh, please call me Archie um perfect and then the name of the high school and the mascot is our lady of perpetual peaches parakeet eating a peach is uh our mascot oh my god i'm gonna hate saying that um <laughs> i'm already i already tell uh, i love the alliteration though it's good. yeah it's good it's very good um cool and then we are going back over our rumors so um we talked about this a little oh sorry i don't want to rush along was there anything else you all wanted to add were there other tidbits you wanted to i uh, i so, sorry go go ahead i just wanted to say that it seems that there should be a small lake nearby mm -hmm. I like um that. maybe like 
half an hour's drive from the city. And a cabin that mis- that somehow always stays in good enough shape for someone to stay in it. Yeah. Ooh, an hour away. Um, there is a small cabin that uh, is like up for rent. Owned by the city, right? Does that feel? Yeah, owned by question mark. Owned by question mm-hmm. mark. Yeah. Cool. Um. Yeah. I also, want want to mention, you know, for my uh, mm-hmm. people that are from the New Jersey or New York area, this is not like Westchester. This is not like an immediate suburb of New York City. Mm-mm. This is like up. This is like I would say maybe an hour or two from away from the city from yeah so what if it's even like let's say it's it's an hour and a half away from rochester like that's it's like base it's basically the border with uh like niagara like that's yeah yeah up up in the buffalo near buffalo yeah yeah, okay yeah Yeah, we're we're good okay got it um cool uh we yeah and then um small lake half an hour away there's a small cabin up by it um yeah anything else guys no no sounds good to me cool we're just gonna go over the rumors real fast then um archie is not related to the peach family actually a mass murderer who fled to corrington the bodies are how the peaches grow um rachel fitwicky was the person who blackmailed um the mayor bramington into the affair and she is now the mayor's wife that's why they're still together um, oh can i tack on to the the archie's peaches rumor real yeah quick? yeah absolutely please that's so what this so the rumor oh is the rumor is that he has to kill at least one person a year so that the peaches can keep growing. <laughs> oh like my the, god <laughs> the sacrifice to the peach god this is children of the corn yes <laughs> Wow. The corn. Yeah. What have we done? I love it. <laughs> how else how else could you explain a peach farm in upstate, in upstate New, New York? York. How, it? how does it how do peaches survive in that cold? Mm, you know. Exactly. Uh, you you wow. the blood keeps it warm. Uh yes. <laughs> perfect. Okay. Uh yeah, so we got uh the mayor's wife, um, and then another rumor is uh someone is stealing hearts from the local hospital and there mm-hmm. is no clue as to who's doing it the rest of the body is intact but they're taking the hearts out of the cadavers and leaving a single rose mm-hmm. um why is this going on who is doing it and for what purpose the police are baffled and then finally high hill road it was in a movie nobody knows which one but it was definitely used in one um perfect guys this is great we know a lot about corrington um now we're gonna go into the second part of the creation our character creation so i hope you guys feel a little bit excited about this yeah Um, best part we're gonna be doing uh a little bit i'm gonna ask you to do a little bit of reading in this part so you guys feel comfortable with what your characters are um but i'm sorry i was i can't do this i wasn't told there'd be reading I'm just... sorry just letting you know right? um so the first one um that we do is the way the game works is you select a trope um so to streamline the character creation process the game uses a set of trope that you can utilize to start a, the game uh, to get into a character more quickly um these tropes which fall into categories like loner weirdo stoic professional or brilliant mathlete will determine your character's stat die and streamline some choices for you um and i, cr- I have a handout available to you all in uh a mm-hmm. game that include lists all the tropes um here's what i'll say choose the trope that you're most interested in playing there's no right or wrong answer here um and you and i will work together to make sure that whatever your character choose will you will be central to the story of the game and remember, and this is the big one, selecting a trope does not mean that you'll be forced into a certain style of play. Mm-hmm. You know, true, the brutish jock isn't going to be as charming as the popular kid. But, you know, as in life, be careful not to assume too much about a personally uh, based on a few descriptors. Um, mm-hmm. If you don't find a trope that fits your sense of character, um, we'll work together to create a character from the ground up. Um, this will take a little bit more time, but if you already got a clear vision of what you want your character to be, we can definitely work through that. Um, and uh, these ones we'll get to a little bit later, but in the bottom right corner 
uh, of your trope sheet, you'll find two question specifics uh, to your trope and likely your age. Um, these are gonna help flesh out who you are. You don't need to answer these out loud, but by the end of the character creation process, you should know what your answers are. So I personally don't answer them. Don't, don't answer those questions. You're gonna know a little bit more at your character um, as you get through it. Um, I'm gonna read a little bit something for you all and for uh, folks uh, who are watching at home about the stats. Um, so for character stats in Kids on Bikes, um, the ki this trope that you choose determine how you assign die to your six stats. That's how this game works. Instead of um, rolling a d20 and then adding modifiers to it, you have a specific die associated to um, the six stats that are in the game. Um, the six stats are brains, um, brawn, fight, flight, charm, and grit. Um, and here's how they break down. Brains, this stat determines how book smart a character is. This will determine how well they understand problems and how well they're doing in school and how quickly they can solve academic problems. This is what you needed for all of Sharif's problems in our <laughs> <last episode. laughs> uh, Next is brawn. This uh, stat determines just how much brute strength a character has. It does not determine um, how well they can fight, just how well they can lift things, how much physical damage they can take. Um, it also can determine how physically intimidating a character is. Just like, what does your build look like? That's what Brawn is going to be determining. Um, mm -hmm. Fight, this stat determines how good a combatant a character is with whatever weapons or fighting skills you decide your character knows. While a character with a high fight stat won't be able to pick up a gun and use it as effectively if they've never fired one before, this stat will make them good with weapons they do have experience with. Also, they'll be able to learn how to use new weapons or fighting styles more easily if given proper training. Up next is flight. This stat determines how fast a character is, as well as how skilled they are as evading their problems, both literally and figuratively. Um, characters with a high uh, flight stat can be fast and tough to trap both physically and verbally. So if you're like quick and you don't really get uh, caught up in traps or if you need to make a quick getaway from a conversation, you can use flight instead of the next skill, which is charm. Or if you like want to like weasel your way out of a ticket or something, you could use flight accordingly. Um, charm, this stat determines how socially adept a character is. This is charisma, um, for lack of a better term. Um, how good they are at reading emotions, uh, and also, this is one's cool, how good they are at reading emotions of another person or group of people. So, like, mm. how empathetic, if you want to, like, try to, like, use social understanding of, like, what a vibe is in the room, you can use charm as well. Um, and you can talk themselves out of tough situations into good ones with relative ease, but within reason. Um, and then uh, the final last one is grit. This stat determines how hard it is to break a character emotionally or physically. Um, so characters with a high grit stat will be able to keep a level head in the worst of situations um, and able to keep their cool when pushed hard. So I don't know, let's say you're a part of the, um, the uh, Our Lady of Perpetual Peace's uh, parakeet pinball team. Uh, <laughs> and someone <laughs> is trash talking you uh, in the middle of your match uh, as you're trying to get the high score I might ask you to make a grit check of uh, six to try and beat it be uh, as opposed to like uh, a government agency um, is interrogating you how well do you handle under the pressure roll me a grit check um, and the best thing that I think about grit is it also determines how street smart as a character you are so you have uh, brains which is like academic problems but street smart is going to be grit um, so the higher the stat is, a better a, better, um, a character is at skills involving that stat. Um, and they're more likely to succeed when using the stat. There's no guarantee that you'll roll your maximum, generally. Um, characters will be able to better able to pass checks with higher die. Um, and we'll get into a little bit more of the mechanics as we get closer to the game. Um, but uh, basically a d20, you're superb at it. People can tell by meeting you you're just naturally really good at that stat. Um, D12 is impressive. D10 is above average. D8 is below average. D6 is bad. And D4 is terrible. You are you are trash at that. Um, 
And then, um, so just a little tidbit from the book. When creating your character, think carefully about how your D20 and your D4 stat balance each other out. If your character has a high D20 in charm and a D4 in fight, a flight, consider what that means for your character. Have they always been able to talk their way out of the problems instead of running from them, including gym class? Or were they always so slow that they had to use humor and kindness to compensate for their inability to escape? Um, think about how your other stats relate to this balance, too. So how, what's the interplay um, that happens here? Um, so I, I know I did a lot of word vomit out, y'all. Does that feel good? Mm-hmm. You're yeah. doing okay? Yeah, yeah. It, makes, yeah. it makes sense to me. Perfect. I'm going to go um, into a little bit. Um, one of the other things that you get to decide when you after you make trope selections for your character are your ages, your strengths, your flaws and your first name we'll get to all the other stuff in a little bit um i'm going to tell you a little bit about age in this game there are three major ages that you can assign your character in a child a teen or an adult and you can pick what your age is in between that but there are some um specific bonuses that you get according to each age um children automatically receive the quick healing strength which we'll get a little bit more into strengths in a moment and they cannot take the rebellious strength. And then when rolling stat checks, um, children add plus one to flight and charm. Um, so as they're fast and likable, they're kids. Um, teens automatically get rebellious strength. And when rolling stat checks, they add plus one to fight and brawn. So because they're, they're teens, they're rebellious, um, and they're willing to sort of, as we can see with Gen Z, uh, do a lot. Um, they're pugnacious and in their prime adults automatically receive the skilled at strength so you can pick one thing to be skilled at and I'm going to point this out to you this can be legal or illegal Um, define it as you want and then when rolling stat checks adults add plus one to their brains and grit checks even if they aren't always geniuses they've seen enough of the world to know what it is about and not to get shaken by it much so there's uh, mm-hmm. definitely advantages to having a well-rounded crew. You could do all kids, and that sets up like a different vibe, or all teens. Um, but yeah, it's just something to consider as you all are building it out and selecting tropes. Um, and then the last thing I'm going to say is about strength and flaws, and then I'm just going to be quiet and let you guys like read and build what you need to build. Um, strength and flaws. Once you've selected your trope and age... Choose from the strength and flaws, which you can see in the handout, uh, associated with the characters. Strengths are the mechanical advantages that your character will have when playing the game. And while, on the other hand, flaws are not mechanical. They'll just help you develop your character's personality. Um, And then you choose two strengths and two flaws associated with your character trope. Um, Or if you want to draw from a larger list, um, the full list can be found in the appendixes I I linked to y'all. But yeah, I, I think the biggest thing is like, if you want to invoke uh, a skill in order to help guide you, like overcome a challenge, like to give you direction on like why your character would be able to do it, it um, strengths are going to be the way you're going to go, and flaws um, aren't going to be like you're not. Let's say you're. Um, let me look at one of the flaws right now. Um, let's see. Because you're disloyal, you're not going to get a minus on your charm check. That's not going to happen. But you get to decide. Personally, why are you disloyal? What what is the oh. backstory um, that sort of builds into that? Cool. And how many of each do we get? Uh, you choose two strengths and two flaws. Okay. Cool. Cool. And so now um, I'm gonna let you guys. It, are there any questions first and foremost? No. Not no. off the bat. Not no. off the bat. Tanya, you disappeared again for a moment. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, my camera is apparently doing weird things. Uh-huh, okay. Um, if I switch cameras, will that mess up the overlay for you, Masood? I don't think so. And I can, um, um, fast, I might be able to fix it on the fly. Yeah, Yeah. my DSLR must be overheating because this is now the second time it's done it. Mm. And he's talking to us from the Corrington Woods. <laughs> yeah, this this yeah, this is part of your character. You're always disappearing. Like, like. that is my that is my power. <laughs> Very cool. Except none of you were supposed to know that yet. Oh, well. <laughs> All right. uh, I'm gonna switch to my webcam. Hopefully cool, cool. it doesn't screw anything up. Do what you gotta do. In the meantime, if there are no other questions, I'm just gonna play 
some nice tunes for y'all um, Ooh, to let you all soundtrack. Ooh, tunes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let I'm me know if, how loud that is. I don't think we'll hear it. Oh, no, we hear it. Yeah. Yeah. So I'd like to, since you mentioned this, can I add something to the lore of, yeah. Co- of Warrington? Absolutely. That's it, please. If you guys have other, let's say, yeah. Because you're talking about playing music, let's say that there's like a D, like a Casey Kasem esque DJ, like a okay. like a radio personality in oh, yeah. Warrington. That is like you know p- people don't know much about him. Well, well, well her or mm-hmm. um, and, and they're like the. Uh, you know, they're like the uh, like the person like everybody tunes into the same station. It's the eighties, so like, you know. Like it's, so it's like, there's no music uh, video. MTV's just sort of coming out. People are yes. still like, oh uh, yeah, heck yeah. It's the only yeah. place um, that's playing good music right now, man. Everything else is like still country yeah. from the seventies. Now we're getting like that real like. Um, a little bit of like Earth, Wind, and Fire, a little bit of like Zeppelin, and even some hip hop because it's 1989. Oh, if it's 89, oh yeah, yeah like I, I'm, I'm just a little bit of Eric B and Rakim going yeah, on. Yeah, absolutely. We got some Public Enemy going <laughs> on there. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Sure. Uh, what is the name of the radio station? Like, give me like four letters. Um, how about uh, W Z Y T? W Z W Z Y T W Z W Z sure yeah W Z <laughs> there you go heck yeah W Z <laughs> <laughs> yeah very cool I like that yeah um cool W Z Y T um and then uh, what's the station called uh, hmm uh. All these stations usually have hot in the word, so I don't know. Mm-hmm. It should just be yeah. <laughs> hot zit. No, yeah, WT, uh, no, W-Y- no, no. Z-Y-T, it's no. hot corn uh, in the morning. <laughs> hot, uh, hot corn. How about uh, 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 oh, it's peach and like Keats? The, the, yeah. Peach and Keats. Oh, yeah, the Peach and Keats. I like that. Peach hey, and you listen Keats. To peach, uh, this is the radio station Peach and Keats. Yeah. Peach and Keats. Very cool. Um, and then... What is the name of this local celebrity? Mm. The this uh, specific DJ. I'll, well, I'll say that they have a radio name. Yeah, so yeah. Oh, like, for, oh, of course. This, they're yeah. That's not the real name. Nobody knows who they are. That's part yeah, of yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So it's like uh, uh, Sparky. Yeah. Mm. DJ Sparky. Sparky. Yeah. Yeah, Sparky. Yeah. yeah. A uh, question I just realized when yeah. you're done doing that. Please. You said adults get skilled as a strength. So does that mean we get skilled and one thing or skilled in two things? You are, you get skilled and two things. You you get skilled. And then okay. you pick two within your trope and yeah. So that's a benefit. Uh, you have you, you basically get three skills while everyone else has two. Well, no, everyone yeah. will have three because you'll get either rebellious strength as a teen or you'll get... Um, okay. I don't think you might not get one as a okay. kid. So, so everyone gets a skill as a trope. Plus, you pick two more from the. You get you get a skill because of your age. Skill list, and then you pick okay. two from your tro- yeah. within your trope. Yeah. Do you oh, also they have a- to be under a trope? Um, not necessarily. I'm 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 comfortable with like kind of moving it around. You just have to explain to me why. That's all I'm gonna okay. need. Yeah. Okay. I'm a kind of benevolent GM. I got it. Okay. I am here for this music. Thank you. Yeah, They're yes. a local Chicago band called North and Wells. Um, they oh. told me I could put this stuff up, and I highly recommend listening Sweet. to them. Nice. Yeah. Sweet. Sparky is blessing us. Yeah. Uh, Thank you. Thank you, DJ Sparky. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because I picked none of the flaws associated with the trope that I want to do, so... That's fine. Flaw, uh, flaws don't even, once again, like as we described, are like purely story. Like, they're going to just mm. define your character more so. Like, So I'm really comfortable if you have like a specific design for what your character is like going to be or like that vibe, go for it. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Do, 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 do. 
does dogmatic mean? Um, I think uh, adhere to like ritual and like yeah. uh, uh, like pretty much following the rules. Got it. Yeah, yeah. It's like a person that's like uh, fervent about the rules. Like, I think it's mostly used for like religious people that, okay. but like it could be applied to anybody that's like, mm -hmm. you got to do it this way or the highway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the chat can't really hear the music that we've got, so if you could give them the band name again. Oh yeah, North and Wells. I can also put it up slightly for them. All right, I think I got my stuff. Very cool. Yeah, yeah uh, team strength. Oh, uh, strength and flaw, right? Yeah, two strengths, two flaws. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Oh, this just makes me want to play Mafia 3. <laughs> <laughs> Even though Mafia 3 is set 20 years earlier than what we're doing. Mm. Well, I mean, someone could... Uh, oh, uh, I just saw the chat uh, tripping clutch. WZYT, music that pops. I'm... That's... Oh, no. that's, oh that's, that's going oh, in. Oh, my God. It's the oh, 80s. You gotta know someone's yeah. doing that. They're gonna uh, lean into no. it. Please. Music that pops. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> no. Like, in, in like, after they say that, they would play a popping Oh, noise. yeah, yeah. It's, no. It's, <laughs> I don't have the sound file, but clearly, it's, some people love it, some people hate it. <laughs> it's like, a, it's like, the, it's like the, the pop that's in the song Lollipop. Uh, <laughs> it's, not, it, it's it's not gross. It's yeah. just redundant. It's like a balloon popping music that pops. Yeah. All right. So I've written my notes. Pops. One more flaw. <laughs> Take your time, guys. We're doing good. I have plenty of flaws, IRL. I don't <laughs> need more in the game. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. I think I got it. So j just to be clear, we're not filling out like motivation and uh, that no, stuff. Like we're just doing this, the trope, strength, and flaws. And that's it. Right. And you can okay. fill out some of the other stuff, um, but just like first name is the big one that I just need to okay. do all. Um, sure. And then we can fill out the those other major questions um, as we get to the end. But if you got something in mind, feel free to vibe it. Okay. Cool. Okay. This is the last track I have set for this uh, time. No rush. I've got other music prepared, but it's going to be a shift. Yeah. I'm. Okay. I'm. I think I'm good. I think, think I'm ready. Good? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. I'm ready to roll. Yeah. That's okay. everybody. Let's go into it. Awesome. Um, perfect. So now uh, that we have the basics of our characters, um, let's sort of establish. Oh, why don't we describe a little bit of what we got so far? Why don't we go around and share what you feel uh, comfortable with? Um, so we can also learn, um, as folks who might not have played this game, what are some of the strengths and options available to you? Um, I'm going to start with Brandon this time. Okay. Yeah. Uh, should we start off with the name? Yeah, give me your first name. Okay, first name is uh, London. London, very yeah, cool. Yeah, London. I like it. Yeah, uh, he is 17 years old. Uh -huh. um, his strengths are he's cool under pressure, um, he's protective, um, and for his flaws, I put he's vain and he's very paranoid. Okay, very cool. Uh, yeah. uh, don't forget to add rebellious because it sounds oh, like yeah, you're yeah. a team, yeah, yeah. so you get that yeah, free. Yeah. You do get that so, free. Okay, a free rebellion. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you, I, I'd love to ask, what trope were, did you draw on to make London? Um, where? Oh, let me see. I think it was the bullish, uh, Brutus Jock. Brutus Jock? Sure. Okay, yeah. Yeah. cool. So let me double check. I'm going to go back. Yeah, uh, Brutish or yeah, Brutish Jack. Cool, perfect. 
Um, so you so London. He's seventeen years old. Uh, he's plays on a sports team um, mm. at Our Lady of Perpetual Peaches. Um, we'll fill that. We'll fill out a little bit more of what he's playing. Um, mm. But yeah, awesome. Uh, let's go to Latia. All right. So uh, I am Micah. I am seven. M I C A H. M I C A H. Yep. Uh, Micah is seventeen years old. Um, she is. Prepared, rebellious, and wealthy. Nice. Uh, she is the child of absent rich parents, so they are, they let her do whatever she wants. Uh, and she is blunt and superstitious. She is a conspiracy theorist. Oh, Ooh. heck yeah. I like Sweet. that. Um, and then, so uh, what trope did you lead into for Micah? Conspiracy theory. Oh, conspir- conspiracy theory is the one. Nice. Yes. That is that is a fun one because of also the world that we're building is kind of revolving around a conspiracy. That could be a good way of how um, it gets introduced to the group. Um, lovely. Uh, Tanya, you're up next. Oh, uh, my character's name, Colleen. Colleen. Uh, she's like 25. 25. An adult. Very cool. Um, she is the loner weirdo. Uh-huh. And... Um, She's skilled at pretending to know how to talk to people. She can get by in the world. Uh, okay. She's quick healing and wealthy. Mm. You know, her parents worked at EDM and they mysteriously died. So she's been left a lot of money. Ooh. Um, but she's also very clumsy and absent-minded. She can trip on totally flat ground <laughs> if she's not careful. <laughs> and has it's was she's memory. Lovely. Colleen. Let's go to Sharif. All right. So my character's name is Clyde. Clyde. Um, I drew off of the overprotective parent trope. Mm-hmm. Um, so Clyde is 19, a young parent. Um, like Clyde uh, basically do you want disappeared. Him to be, yeah. Do you What's want up? him to be a teenager or an adult, in your opinion? Yeah. So, so he's 20 years old. So he's, it's, okay, you said nineteen, but I. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry. Sorry. Well, nineteen, yeah, no, no, nineteen, good. twenty. I'm good. Yeah, yeah, twenty. So he's so, a young adult. Yeah. Yes. So he disappeared, um, around high school. I'd say freshman year or so, and mm-hmm. came back with a kid. Uh, yeah. All so right. he kind of came back to the neighborhood with this baby. Uh, no one knows who the mom is or where the baby came from, mm-hmm. but he is a young, o- over protective parent um so the strengths are protective and prepared mm-hmm. um the flaws are secretive and patronizing very cool Ooh. how old is uh, your kid what's their name uh the kid's name is uh i uh, did not think of the kid's name right? <laughs> um the the uh, kid's name is april 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 so, so like it's a it's it's a young girl uh-huh and and uh she is three she's three so just like oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. really in that toddler yeah. age no wonder yes. you're so protective any could yes. get anywhere get into anything yeah Very and cool. and like patronizing because now mm-hmm. even though clyde is 19 he thinks he knows more he, he's like worldly yeah, yeah you yeah. know <laughs> like so so he's like no i i know this because right. i've been through very cool mm-hmm. uh, awesome and now that we sort of established who we all are just generally what are um how are you all related to the other characters and and we want you to make these uh decisions based on what the players tell you about who you are um and it won't really make sense for every character to know one another we should have at least one meaningful connection to another character um just for my hand so you can decide right now if you don't know someone or if you know them, and that's going to play into the next part where we're going to be asking some other questions. Um, but at least right now, um, what are your relationships to one another? And uh, if you're stuck, here are some basic suggestions that we can throw out. Um, you could do uh, parents and children. You could do siblings, step siblings, half siblings, cousins, classmates, teachers and students, best friends or worst enemies, neighbors, mentors and mentees, bosses and employees, and significant others and spouses. Or you could even be um, like 
I don't know, both members of Rivals. Like, you could be, um, have some sort of... Secret Rivals members. Secret Rivals members. Uh, oh, my God. <laughs> and we yeah. don't know until we go to our to a meeting. Meeting. And you pull off your hoods. <laughs> and, yeah. mm. No <laughs> hoods. No hoods, sorry. <laughs> In my mind, they were a different type. My bad. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, we got, like, you know, like, the, the hoodies. Yeah. And, uh... Like when we pull and our the, down, it's all like, "Oh, it's you!" <laughs> yeah, <it's very> cool. <laughs> oh um, yeah, got, got got some champion hoodies. Cool. And uh, it says rivals on there, says, but then <laughs> we're not subtle. <laughs> no, we're no, not, yeah, no. We're, yeah, yeah, no. we're a full, fully branded gang. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With merch. <laughs> um, uh, do you mind if I go? Yeah, go for it. Uh, so I think. I know London. We go to we go to Our Lady of Perpetual Peaches together. Yes, but I don't think we interact much. Mm -hmm. Um, Colleen, you said you were wealthy, right? Yes. Okay. So I know Colleen because she's got money, and I've got money, and yeah. we've probably seen each other at like a at a rich function or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I don't think I know Clyde. Okay. So if that works for, yeah. for y'all. Yeah. Yeah. Then yeah, then yeah, yeah. 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 To build on that, I'd say Clyde, people knew of him, but he, he was kind of like, um, in, 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 in younger grades. So like middle school, he, yeah. like people knew of him, but he was kind of not a big deal. Uh -huh. He disappears and comes back with this kid. Um, it's like, bit of a mini sensation at least to him it is sure 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 because yeah, he's never had all this attention he's the last one that anybody would expect to like kiss a girl like let alone like yeah. be able to make a kid so like it's kind of like a mini thing and, and it kind of goes to his head a little bit as 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 i said it becomes kind of a like a patronizing little yeah. uh thing because he's you know kind of goes to his head like mm -hmm. like he thinks he's grown right uh, he's got he's got responsibilities now that these other yeah. kids don't have. Um, yeah. So how does that allow you to relate that? So uh, uh, Latia said Micah doesn't know Clyde. Um, mm -hmm. So you guys don't know each other. Perfect. Does Clyde know uh, uh, Colleen or London? Um, I would say he. So Clyde, because uh, he's a little older, yeah. um, he has done some side work for uh, Archie in in the peach in the peach farm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> side work, yeah, <laughs> side work. Uh -huh. You know, late at night with a mask. Uh -huh. um, and uh, so th the peach farm is like the spot. Yeah. So he might not know them personally, but he knows of them just from working there. Sure, sure, this sure. This is a spot where a lot of people congregate to. Mm. Um, cool. So Clyde, uh, so but for for a formality, just like a a general, you know them or you don't know. They, like I hate to be binary. I don't know them personally. No, I I I I'm not I'm not friends cool. or know them personally. This is going to play a factor in a moment, but I appreciate I'd, that. I, I more know them in the way that when you're in a small town, everybody yeah. knows of everybody, even Perfect. if you don't know them personally. And we'll it's get like to that. That's yeah. that's ideal. Um, yeah. Cool. And then uh, and London, Colleen, how y'all know everyone else at the table? Ooh, okay. Um, so uh, well, well it basically, London, do you know Colleen? I think that's that's the final uh, string that we're kind of drawing together. Um, I'll say. No, for now, yeah. Wow, okay. I was gonna say you're my cousin, the beat <laughs> what? guy. What? Yeah. I tried wow. to switch it up, but yeah, I, uh, no, London you guys could, you guys could, I mean, cousins, cousins don't have to know, yeah, yeah, really know right. yeah, yeah. I mean, we could do that. I like, yeah. I, I dig that, and it could be weird. Um, Colleen's your aunt and uncle passed away in London, and now you just don't see Colleen, like that, mm. like you know, she's kind of been off doing their own thing, yeah. If that's cool with y'all, I don't want to throw too much narrative. That's on fine. It. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And and Colleen is making assumptions because she's that loner weirdo. Yeah, that London hates her. Yeah, and blames her for the aunt and uncle suddenly being gone. Right. Well, he probably and, think like, well, they didn't leave me any money. Maybe Colleen like kind of like 
cut out the rest of the family. Like, mm-hmm. it kind of like has that neuroses around it, maybe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, Colleen knows Micah in that sense of the few rich people in the one town kind of know each other. Mm-hmm. But they're like the Hatfields and McCoys. They're not really friends, but they they they've been at the function and they do the. Oh, it's you. Hi. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The the I've I've got sparkling grape juice in a in a plastic uh-huh. wine glass that I tip to you as I go somewhere else. Awesome. <laughs> this is great, guys. I love this. Um, so just a little bit of a recap. Micah and London know each other. Y'all both in school. You're um both uh seventeen, so you're in the same uh class. Um. Colleen and Micah know each other because y'all are um, wealthy socialites in a relatively small town. So, of course, y'all get along um, to decide what to do with the rubes of the plebeians in your town. Uh, (laughs) And then uh, you've got Clyde, who doesn't really know folks. He's just around. People know about Clyde, and he knows that. Um, And so he also doesn't really have time to know other people because he's too busy caring about April. Um, very cool. Next up is one of my favorite, uh, parts of this, uh, game and like the game building is really when we dive into a little bit more of the relationship with one another. So what we're going to do now, um, is, uh, I believe I gave you a handout in our game called, uh, relationship questions. Um, and there's two sets. You've got characters, you know, positive, positive questions mm-hmm. and negative questions and then for characters you don't know you have your own set of questions there um for here's what we do each player will answer two questions about each character they know at the table and one question about each character they do not know so i'm going to ask each of you questions about it so you might know something about them that the other like so everyone's in total here um it's going to be asked a few questions okay. um for a character you know you're going to roll a d20 and um, pick a question out of there. If the question doesn't fit the relationship you have in mind or the roles haven't been answered, we can re-roll, and then you're gonna cross out the question and then move forward. For roll roll 20, if for a character you don't know, you do the same thing, the same caveats above, and then you cross out the question. Um, And so, nice. Um, let's say, let's start with, uh, London. Cause I, I saw that role. Um, let's yeah, say, I was trying to test it out. I no, should no, not work. No, it's perfect. It's good. Okay. This is a good way to do it. Um, so 17, um, let's do, um, well, why don't we do, uh, we'll go around and, uh, fill out about Clyde first from everyone else, but you okay. don't know. 17. What do you hope to learn about this character to manipulate them? Oh, Oh, so let's get started. Wow. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, oh, so I'm answering. Yeah, just uh, okay. fill me out. Um, I hope to learn a little bit about the backstory of uh, like Clyde's relationship with his child's mother, because I feel like that's something I could use to my advantage because other people don't know about much. About yeah, that. you're trying to get a little bit more info. Um, is London? Why does London want to know this? Are you like on the? Are you on the newspaper? Are you like trying to figure out like the school newspaper? You're trying to crack a code, or? Well, London's already paranoid, and uh, the fact that a lot of people don't know much about, you know, Clyde's relationships, you know, he wants to know a little bit more about it so he can uh, use that to his advantage later yeah. on, possibly. You don't know who he is. He just showed up again. He was here. It's suspicious. And it makes you worried. Heck yeah. Uh, They are perfect. Um, Let's go to... uh, Well, why don't we... uh, Let's alternate. Um, uh, Sharif, why don't you roll me um, a d20 about uh, London? You got an 11. What bad thing have you heard about this character that you can't believe is true? Mm. Um. Uh, can you remind me of London's background? Uh, London is Colleen's cousin. Um, he is a seventeen-year-old teenager. Um, he is a jock. Um, we haven't said what sport, but let's just say okay. 
lacrosse. I don't know. Oh, lacrosse okay. Yes. Oh, sweet. Yeah. You're uh, definitely preppy upstate yeah. New York and lacrosse player. Yes, yes. He's, <laughs> he's quite rebellious at times. Heck yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um. So, and let me reread the question. So the question is characters you don't know. So what bad thing have you heard that you can't believe is true? Okay. So I heard that... Um, that London um, was a. Uh, um, so I'll say that Clyde is not that familiar with <laughs> with lacrosse. Yeah. Uh, so he has heard that London um, is a cheater. Uh, so he cheats during these games, yeah. but somehow the refs, the other players, just there's no complaints, there's no scandal, but he clearly uh cheats during these like lacrosse games and it's not a big deal and, paid- and clyde feels like he's the only one that notices yeah because i mean there's not much to do in the town there's not really a football team but people show up to the lacrosse games and mm. you know everyone should be rooting i think everyone does root for the peaches because they're the home team but clyde who's now trying to do what's right and like kind of pick himself up doesn't stand for people get handouts or just sort of get by i like that very cool um heard that london is a cheater pays off the referee let's do um uh tanya roll me 2d20 about micah one or two two Okay. Ooh, oh, an wow. eighteen, an eighteen, and a nineteen. Perfect. Jeez. So we're gonna do um, one positive and one negative, and then um, when we go, okay. eventually, I'm gonna go back and ask you another positive. But first, the positive one, um, eighteen. What is your first memory of this character? Which is which is what's your first memory? Oh. Um, Micah being one of the few people that actually talked to Colleen when uh her family moved to this town when they uh when they got when her parents got jobs at edm because everybody else was like oh you work for that company mm. and, you know and they had nice stuff they had moved like from the city yeah and uh everybody thought that they were snooty and rich snobs and micah didn't care about that and talk, sure. actually talked to london well i i like that because it's also like or talk to me to, yeah talk to colleen i like that because it's like um, your family's kind of new money and there's a been old money in the town, but because of EDM, you guys got like really good jobs there. Your family was able to get situated. Um, so even within the wealthy community, there were rumors about y'all, but, uh, Micah also was probably a kid. There's like eight years between y'all. So there's not like, um, there's still like kind of a kid when you guys moved there. So it was just nice to y'all. Yeah. Nice it's the it's the the one kid who always pays attention to the lonely weirdo it's that it's that trope yeah, yeah. <laughs> very cool i like that it's like you just need a hug <laughs> <laughs> uh awesome 19 oh this is a good one this is so this is oh. off the negative chart how do you intentionally annoy micah <laughs> uh, i don't know um i I started a thing with Micah about finishing puzzles by mail, and I would send Micah a nice puzzle, even though we live in the same town, and then I'd always leave out that one piece. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my god. Hell yeah. Wow. So Micah would like be all down, it's like, and then it's like always that one piece dead in the middle. (laughs) Uh, Right in the middle, perfect. Okay, I like that. Which shows that Colleen has gone through the effort of putting the puzzle together to find out which piece to take and (laughs) then mailing it to. Well, and that's part, it might be like a thing. I was like, Hey, I did this puzzle in like an hour. It was super easy. And you're just like struggling because you can't. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) Every time. Yeah. Yeah. What's wrong with you? And then it's like a thing. It's like, Oh, did you not finish that puzzle? I sent you again. (laughs) Very dope. Okay, um, now let's do, uh, let's go to um, Micah. Can you roll me 2d20 about London? 
A three Jesus. and a one. Hey, I mean, I, I, the, trust me, they don't mean anything. Uh, I know. And they mean everything. It's it's very fun. <laughs> uh, it's just that, that, that residual from D&D where it's like, how could I roll so low? Yeah. You got a nat one on your character relationships. You guys, you wow. hate each other. You absolutely despise one another. Um, hey, uh, number three, what trait about this character that they despise do you genuinely appreciate? What is it about mm. London that they might not be the most proud of, but you like seeing like, yo, that's dope. That's like, like, keep doing that. Um, I think, so London, just for some, some clarification for me so that I can answer this question properly. Like, how are you, you are a jock, but how are you in school? Um, I get moderate grades. Um, I mean, I'm not the best in the class, but I definitely pay attention because I know it's important to, uh, know my studies so I can go to college like my parents want me to. Got it. Yeah. Um, but I would say London and I shared a class once and I saw him struggle a little bit, but he still put in the work and got a passing grade in the class. Um, I didn't, you know, I probably could have offered to help or something, but oh, I yeah. was doing other stuff. But the fact that, you know, he, uh, you know, worked through that and was able to um you know pull his grade up and you know actually like seek help to improve his grades instead of being like nah i can't do this i'm just gonna fail right and like he might not talk about it that he even asked somebody for help in the process but like he you all were let's say you guys were in even in a group project together once and then afterwards there's an exam coming up to pull his grade up you all work together a little bit um, mm -hmm. Heck yeah, I really like that. Um, and then number one on the negative list, what did this character do in the past that you still resent them for? Mm. 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 I think, oh, after that project where we worked together, um, I was shoved in the lockers by some of his Ooh. jock friends. Classic, classic. Yes. Wow. Super classic. Like, I oh. helped you with this group project, and you couldn't even get your silly jock friends off my back. How could you? I'm mm. sorry. Stop. London. <laughs> His friends. Wow. I like that. You you would think, right? It's like, cool when we're in private, but now that we're in public, the, mm -hmm. the personas draw up again. Very... And it's like, after the fact, yeah. after the fact, like, he gave me that look that was like, I'm sorry. <laughs> but he still didn't do anything about it. And I'm like, yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry, but I'm not risking my social capital in this place. Exactly. Oh. <laughs> you know what's really sad? Tank. I I think I've seen Brandon make that face. <laughs> possibly. Sorry. Possibly. No, not possibly. Oh, <laughs> uh, highly yeah. possible. <laughs> Well, awesome. So we went around a little bit once. We do have some more rounds to go around as we answer the questions. But I'm looking at the time. I think it's the perfect time for a short bio break. So if you guys want to meet us back in about uh, five to seven minutes, we'll be here. Um, but yeah, thanks for checking us out. Thanks for hanging out with us for this uh, Rivals on Bikes uh, sponsored by uh, Blue Microphones Stream. We're very excited to be here and we can't wait um, to come right back to this. We're having a fun. Yeah, this is I'm, this is super fun. I can't yeah. wait at this long. Heck yeah. This is great. I love this. <laughs> so, well, we'll get back into the meat of these relationships in just a moment. See you all in a bit.
And hey, y'all, we are back. Welcome to Rivals on Bikes, sponsored by Blue Microphone. We are very excited to be back here. Um, last time we left, we were answering some questions about our characters, Micah, Colleen, London, and Clyde. Um, so let's get into it. Last time we left off was a uh, Micah and London relationship. Um, so let's do um, the reverse of that Uh Brandon, could you roll me two d20s about uh, Micah? Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, I should have done it like that. No, no, no that's good. All right, we can uh, read them twice. Oh, all right. A nine and a 20, which means you've already won this game. Um, <laughs> uh, so number nine for you from a positive treat is um, what is this character sacrificing to protect you? Mm. Ooh. Uh. Ooh. Okay. I will throw in that uh, Micah knows about uh, London's bisexuality. Like he doesn't want well, to find out. Mm-hmm. All right. Hell All yeah. Right. Very, very dope. Um. And, uh, yeah, I just want to state out, obviously, the way we're playing, we're going to keep in mind with our lines and veils, but if we do want to keep some tension around this, we'll do it in a way that feels right and appropriate. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, cool. Your number 20 for negative list is, Mm -hmm. how did this character betray you in the one time that you confided in them? Oh, okay. <laughs> so they so they know about your bisexuality, but they're sacrificing mm-hmm. to protect it. But they did portray you in some other way. And how was that? Um uh, I think mm-hmm. there was a miscommunication from the project that they had mm-hmm. um where London was talking to his friends and his friends thought that Micah like did something. Mm-hmm. So that's why they did the whole locker push. Oh. So, that's, so and he didn't know how to uh, fix it because he was scared that Micah would tell people about him. I see. What a tangled web we weave. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> miscommunication. So just for my records, miscommunication from the project that they shared, it mm. led to the push. Because mm-hmm. they couldn't be any anything else couldn't be, uh, it, it felt this was the most political response in the mm-hmm. in the si- system of high school. This was the yeah. right way to do it. Nice, yeah. I like that. Um, cool. That's we got that sort of a balance out. Um, we're gonna smooth our way back to Clyde. And so for this one, um, we did uh, Clyde and uh, London already. Let's do uh, Clyde and Colleen. Um, so I would like both of y'all to roll me a d20. Oh, dear. Mm-hmm. All right. So let's start with uh, Tanya for Colleen. You got a 12 for Clyde. Um, what do you hope to gain <laughs> by humiliating this relative no. stranger? Oh, my <laughs> God. Oh, my no. God. <laughs> Can I re-roll that? Oh, oh sorry. No, honestly. Yeah, no. You, if, you, if you want to, if you don't, doesn't feel right, pick another one, please. Yeah, I'm like, that's what a, a question. It's a great, it's a great, mm, <laughs> chef's kiss of a question. I'm just uh, like, wow. oh my God, I'm, yeah. I'm not playing the type, but good Lord. Um, um, why don't, no, that wouldn't fit either. What scandal in this town was this character involved with? Yeah, yeah. And what, and. I think it's interesting you know about it, right? Like, this is something that you carry about them. Um, to kind of tie it to London's nosiness about the kid's mom. Yeah. Who? I know I know what really happened that night. Mm. Mm. Oh, my God. We're having our own serial mm. podcast around Clyde I know. right here. <laughs> and I'm here for it. <laughs> I mean, nobody's saying we can't do this. <laughs> Every other week or something. You're not wrong. <laughs> uh, Colleen um, knows something about um, Clyde's uh, baby mommy. 
She oh knows what she knows what Clyde did three summers ago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Literally. Why mm -hmm. she's not around. And you know what? I'm gonna leave that to you. So like sit sit on that. Yeah. You can, we can when we get to a point where we want that to be revealed, we'll get there. But I like this. Um, all right, and then so Sharif, you rolled a ten. Um, yep. How far would you go to get to know Colleen? And why? Why were you trying to get to know Colleen? Um. Oh well. How like what are you comfortable with, and why? Huh? I'd say that. Yeah. Uh. So I know Colleen is uh from money. Um. So I think that being a young parent and uh, you know, being a little economically stretched. Um, and also not being a big fan of working uh, at the peach uh, farm, uh, I think he's looking to. Uh, you're you're a gold this, digger. You're basically he <laughs> is looking to. He is willing oh, to. Oh. Fide is willing to do what he has to do. You're a con man. You're you're a, wow. you're a southern wow. gentleman. Kind of <laughs> to, like oh, this young widow. <laughs> to, uh, wow. Well, she's not a widow. Her parents died. You're right. Absolutely. Young yeah, heiress. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he is willing to play various cards uh, that might not necessarily be uh, on the up and up, but he's he's willing to go pretty far to get in uh, Colleen's good graces. And I love, um, I love that you, Colleen, knows like about why his baby mommy's not there. So like, is instantly like blocking any attempt. Like, I love. Yeah, that. yeah, and oh. and like and like, I guess we're saying that she knows, and I don't know she knows. Right. I guess. Is that what we're, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so like, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm trying to, trying to lay it on thick. <laughs> Very dope. Um, uh, Cool. So let's go to then um, we will round it out to Tanya. Tanya, you did uh, Micah last. Um, could you give me yes. two roles about uh, uh, London now? Um, so just roll 2d20. You can roll 2d20, yes. Okay, got a, a 1 and a 13. Um, what do you admire about London? And um, but you would never tell them. What's something about them that you admire about them, but you would never tell them? Uh, the fact that they're <clears throat> at least from what I can see that they're still kind of making their own way in life and actually have friends. Mm. At least from what I can see and think. Impressed uh, that they're kind of they're really self-made. Yeah, they're like, they actually know how to be, have regular human interactions, <laughs> unlike me. And is sociable. Hell yeah. Very dope. Um, and then for your uh, 13 and the negative side, um, what part of this person's personality scares you? Mm. Mm, what are London's flaws again? Uh, he is vain and he's paranoid um the combination of vain and paranoia actually makes colleen very afraid he would go to any length to salvage what he thinks is his reputation mm. um and that while he has friends he doesn't keep the same friends for very long and now she's got like all these ideas of like has his vanity been deadly <laughs> <laughs> Mm. I love it. The seventeen-year-old is up to some shady business. <laughs> I'm, I'm here for it. Well, you are, but you also met kids. <laughs> also true. And uh, aren't you a, a conspiracy theorist, or is that Micah? No, <laughs> that was Micah. 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 Gotcha, gotcha. Gotcha. This is this could be good. This could be a conspiracy that you guys chat about because uh, <laughs> you all, all know each other. I like this. Uh, very cool. So we got those two. Um, Let's go uh, to Micah. Micah, we've done um, how you last you rolled was for um, your relationship to London. Um, let's do uh, your relationship now to Colleen. Could I get uh, okay. two rolls again? All right, uh, 16 and a nine, perfect. Um, what aspect of Colleen's personality do you try to use as a model for your own? Like what's something that you um, impersonate from Colleen? 
Um, uh, this one is real, real easy. She seems like, despite being a bit of a loner, she seems really put together without her parents. Mm. And even though I have my parents, but they are, um, you know, absent because of money. Yeah. Mm. Um, I think, uh, Colleen's personality is something that I would like to try to emulate. Mm. Almost like when you're an adult. You would like to sort of mm-hmm. be in that sort of space, yeah. Maybe Colleen when I grow up. Yeah. Oh my God, that's so not the right way to go. But okay. <laughs> well, I also think it's uh, and and correct me if this is too wrong, if this is too dark, but like, your parents aren't ever around. You kind of wonder what it would be like if they, if something happened to them on a trip, just like, and then it was just you. How would mm-hmm. you manage? How would that sort of exist? So like, Colleen might be, in some ways. You would never say that you want wanted it to happen, but you know you could do it following Colleen's model, right? Yeah. Right. My parents are there; they're always visiting the the summer home or mm-hmm. the winter home or the two weeks away for no reason home. You know, yeah. <laughs> anything but their Corrington home. Actual, exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Anything but their actual daughter. <laughs> right. Uh... Very dope. I like this. All right. Um. Cool. So we have now um done. To, oh, and then the other one was a nine. Um, let's see on this. What is the most dishonest thing you've seen Colleen do? Aside from the puzzles? <laughs> yeah. Colleen? <laughs> well, let's, uh, we can decide. Do you know the puzzles are messed up? Uh, have you caught on? Have you? Uh, um, or is there a conspiracy that a male person is stealing one puzzle every time? <laughs> oh, no. No. <laughs> oh, it's that's- it oh is absolutely God. a conspiracy. It's a federal crime. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Wow. They have to get to the bottom of it. Man. This is this is how it annoys them so much. Oh, I, I love these circles. Yeah. And uh, it's absolutely not Colleen. It's the mailman. He's always just taking that one. And it's always that middle piece. It's, it's always. It's a calling card. Darn you, mailman. Maybe yes. they're, they're, maybe they're the same person who's stealing hearts and leaving a single rose. You know? <gasps> mm-hmm. uh, they've, they've adapted to, like, dip, now postal crime. How dare no. they? <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, um, no, yeah. I think um, at a social function... Um, Colleen probably gave misinformation to somebody, like something that I knew mm-hmm. that I overheard. I don't know. You were feeling vindictive that day, maybe. I don't know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh, you, uh, Colleen gave, you know, like misinformation, like is something as simple as the bathroom is one way when it's really the other. I mean, I've done that in real life, so. <laughs> on purpose, you would say. Yes. Yeah, misinformation on purpose. Um, maybe to uh, a tourist coming into town for the fall festival, pointing them in the, like they were asking for directions and like. Oh, of... no, they wanted to get to the lake for the tugboats, but Colleen sent them like east when they should have gone west. So oh, the person had to drive like two hours for no reason. They found the nice pumpkin farm. It yeah. was lovely. Mm-hmm. Instead of I'm, West. I'm, I mean, this is before, like, you know, Google Maps. Absolutely. <laughs> right. Absolutely. So you have to go by the the goodwill of, uh, <laughs> of, of, of people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I like mm-hmm. this. Very cool. Um, all right. And then we are back to uh, Brandon. And I think we've sort of touched at least once on all the interplays that have gone mm. around. So let's do... Um, one more uh, question around the horn. So, uh, Brandon, um, for London, let's go to uh, London and Micah. Give me one more D20. You got a seven. Um, what is your private nickname for uh, Micah, and why? Hmm. Uh, oh, let's see. Plain Jane. Plain Jane. And where did it come wow. from? Um, I don't know. Uh, London noticed uh, when, you know, they did their project together that Micah just would wear the same kind of clothes that yeah. you'd see on a mannequin at, like, you know, the local store. Uh-huh. Yeah, and you guys, so. you guys kind of got to a comfortable enough point where you guys could, like, roast each other 
on this sort of project and i was like uh no i don't think so oh I this is a mean just, nickname yeah, okay cool. yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Rude. yeah. <laughs> rude wearing so michael likes to wear mannequin outfits <laughs> I am young. I don't have parents to give me proper fashion sense. Absolutely. I just go to a store and say, "Give me that. <laughs> give me that. <laughs> give me that. That that's the fit I want. Look how good it looks on them. Yeah. <laughs> Very dope. Um, cool. Well, let's let's throw it back, Michael. Uh, why don't you give me a d twenty? Yeah. Take this. <laughs> take that. You got a twelve. Very cool. Um, what about this character always makes you happy? Uh, he's a goofball. He's an absolute goofball. Like, he's that one kid in the hallway who is always doing something really ridiculous and making people laugh. And it it's hilarious for me. Like, it just puts the biggest smile on my face. Mm, I like that. All right. So... We've done Micah and London, and London and Micah, we've wrapped that up. Um, let's go to, uh, let's stay on the Micah train. Let's go to Colleen and Micah. Um, can you, Tanya, give me another D20? Oh, that's a 10. Got a one. Um, we already did this one. What do you admire about this character, but you would never tell him? You can pick another one if you want. What do you and this character have a mutual weird love of? Oh, yeah. Um, murder mysteries. Murder mysteries. Absolutely. Love them. Very cool. Very, very cool. Um, so that one is... And then uh, Micah for Colleen. I'd love to get... Um, Another uh, D20. Yes, as soon as I can spell correctly. <laughs> what is my first memory of Colleen? What is your first memory of Colleen? Mm. I think... It would have been the like the picture in the paper when her parents died. Mm -hmm. So, oh, okay, okay. So the first memory of God. So you didn't know. You didn't meet Colleen when she still had parents she's always not had parents for the entire time that you've known them very mm -hmm. cool okay let's go with uh micah colleen first time um first memory of colleen was the newspaper um what what's the name of the local newspaper um the, it is this is the peach periodical <laughs> no it's too many peaches <laughs> for once it's too many peaches for once. uh it's the corrington quarterly yes but Ooh. it's not quarterly yeah <laughs> you just call it the quarterly corrington <laughs> quarterly um uh, was the corrington quarterly displaying the news of Colleen's parents' death. So I'll, I'll, I'll say that, that that's my first clear memory yeah, of her. Yeah. Like, I'm sure that we, like, social functions pass back and forth, but, like, it didn't, I didn't actually, like, know who she was. Yeah. And then it was when the article came out about her parents' uh, demise, mm -hmm. untimely or no, mm -hmm. uh, that it was like, oh, her. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very dope. 
Um, I think the only one left, uh, we're going to, Sharif, I'm going to do uh, Clyde's last, but it's now going to be uh-huh. Colleen and London. Um, and then London and Colleen. So, uh, oh, what's it called? Uh, Colleen, can you roll me one more d20? Sure. And then a 10. This one is, what lengths would you go to in order to defend this character? Yeah, and this is... Uh... This doesn't have to be extreme, depending on your relationship. Let's just like give, like what what are the what is your relationship? How far would you go to protect them? Um, I'd probably stop rumors I heard about London, because you know, like I I feel like I my character's like the cousin that kind of keeps an eye out for London because they're a younger kid. But they also don't like try too hard because they don't want London to be like, I hate you. Because they also assuming that London hates them. They don't mm. really know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, like if, if there were weird rumors about London flying around, she'd do her best to stop them. Maybe like London mysteriously gets an anonymous like check in the mail mm. around the holidays and they never know who it's from, but it's from me. Yeah. I think this is actually super helpful because I realized we actually didn't do uh, London's relationship to Colleen. We did all the other mm. ones. We didn't answer those. Um, so I'm going to have you roll three D20s. And I want you uh, to, uh, oh. you, uh, Brandon, roll three mm. D20s and think of the numbers as positive, negative, positive, And just give you some time to like look over those um, mm. while I throw it to Sharif. Um, and I'm going to ask you... So give me one last D20 about Micah. Wait, you want me, yeah. me, me, you want me to do a D20? I'd love for you to do a D20. Brandon's going to be doing this thing in the background while we answer this yep. question because uh, I right, need yeah. a 14. You got a 14. Uh, last one. Uh, you don't know. Uh, what is this? Who does uh, Micah have a public feud with? And it's like very public, like everybody knows. <laughs> but it, everybody knows enough for you to know about it, right? Hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh. So it's a pu- So it's like everyone knows. It's not just my perception or no things like that. Okay. Uh, I think Micah has a public feud with uh with Sparky. Yeah. Has a public. Feud yeah, Sparky with Sparky, uh, yeah. with a WZYT and, music that pops. Yeah, uh, yeah. and I, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's don't know like where it's Micah hurting. thinks thinks uh, you know that her music sense that, that is better, and that Sparky might be kind of you know um, you know just not really playing what Micah believes should you know should be the the soundtrack of the town very dumb and 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 they're very vocal about they're they give very <laughs> passive aggressive comments about each other okay uh, yeah yeah i love that. So, that that i think that's perfect like um anytime they're in the car you know they automate they, it's never playing the radio station there's something that happened um and that i'd also like to leave it to you let's see to think about like you don't have to come up with something now but just like to ponder and sit on. Oh, I've already got it. <laughs> you already got it. Do you want? Do you want to share? If it's if it's public, yes. you can share if you want to. Yeah. Oh no no no! And like every like I will not shut up about it. Uh, uh-huh. Sparky, I have sent so many letters to Sparky about the Archie Peach Farm conspiracy, and he does. They one do not read them, do not report them, and just completely ignore me. Mm. Like I like I want to I, like I'm trying to keep Corrington abreast of all of my of all of my news, which is all conspiracy yeah. theories. <laughs> but Sparky's just like having none of it. Like Ooh. he clearly thinks it's just this kid who's just being ridiculous. But one day I'm gonna be right, yeah. and he's gonna regret it. I, I love it. it. And, and and here's the thing: you're probably mad because you think Sparky's in on it now. He's covering it up. He's keeping it all under wraps. Absolutely. Perfect. Awesome. Uh, cool. So, Brandon, uh, you feel good? You ready to jump into uh, this? Well, yeah. Was I supposed to? Because I did the uh, the D twenties, but I didn't know which numbers. Oh, were. cool. Well, then let's let's talk through it. Um, okay. Let's go with the first one. Characters you know, positive. So you got okay. a two for this. What okay. trait 
uh, about this character that they despise do you generally appreciate? We've a- we asked this before, but you can think mm-hmm. of if you want to answer this, you can, or just pick another one. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's pick another one since let's we did that one. one. Um, let's do number five because I don't think that's come up. What role did Colleen play in the best day of your life? Oh, knowingly or not knowingly? Uh, you, like it's up to you. It was the best day of your life, and Colleen was a factor in it. How mm-hmm. I like how did it how did it roll out? Yeah, so like uh, as Colleen talked about sending letters, um, I yeah. think London, yeah, he received a letter um, where he learned a little bit more about his family that he didn't know since he's been kind of disconnected from everybody. Uh, and it was the first time he ever, I guess, felt like um, he actually mattered to other people besides like his friends and stuff. Felt- People liked him not just because he was popular. People yeah, yeah. genuinely liked him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Felt like he was appreciated as a human and not as a list of accomplishments. Heck yeah. Very dope. Um I like that a lot. It's also that's very that's very sweet. Um let's go to the second one that you've got rolled here. A six. So this is gonna be from the negative side. Um what what are they doing? What is this what is Colleen doing, either knowingly or unknowingly, that hurts you? What's something mm. about them that like about their relationship that you know and their behavior um that hurt yeah, just hurts you? Uh I will say London believes the amount of money that Colleen has affects his relationship with her because uh they they can't connect because like he feels that there's like the money in between like he feels there's this uh, social class mm-hmm. oh yeah. yeah so i mean i think that could be interesting like um we already established colleen's family moved to edm as new money where your family may have been there before and weren't money and so mm-hmm. now it's yeah you're related but also it's there's this weird dynamic i like that um has made Social class troubles. Very cool. Um, and then the final one that you rolled was a 17. Um, what do you dislike about Colleen that everyone seems to love? Everyone seems to love this one thing about Colleen, but to you, it just kind of rubs you the wrong way. Mm. I think London believes that like a lot of people like Colleen, but he feels that he sees through it. Because, like, you know, he's he feels, you know, like, why is she nice to all these people, but she's not nice to me? Mm. Yeah. Sees through, um, like, fake sincerity with other people. Does that sound right? Mm-hmm. Perfect. Very dope. I think that will round out all of our questions. Yeah, I'm looking through this. London to Clyde, we got uh, one question. Clyde to London, we got one question. Uh, Colleen to Micah, we got three. Micah to Colleen, we got three. Micah to London, we got three. London to Micah, we got three. Clyde, you only got one because no folks, uh, not that many folks know each other. Um, but mm-hmm. yeah, do you want me to, I could read through these really fast if you want to just to, we can keep abreast of them or uh, chat if that feels like something you're interested in. And leave it out. Take a moment to wait. Yeah, we're supposed to be dancing or something. No, no, no. This is like the whole uh, the my, whole music. my waiting dance. I'll, yeah. I'll I'll read them back just oh. real fast so we uh, can keep track of it. Um, so, oh, thank you, London to Clyde. Um, you London wants to know a little bit more about Clyde's mo- uh, baby mommy um, and wants to keep tabs on Clyde for who they are because they're kind of a mysterious figure. Um, Clyde, you heard that London is a cheater and he paid off the ref. Um, Colleen to Micah, uh, one of the, uh, Micah was one of the first people to talk to Colleen when they, uh, arrived in EDM, uh, sorry, in Corrington. Um, they've built a friendship where now Colleen actively annoys Micah by sending, um, a puzzle in the mail, but would leave a puzzle out right in the middle. And they, y'all both love murder mysteries. Um, and then, so let's go Micah Colleen in reverse then. 
Um, Micah is jealous of Colleen and how well they are established, uh, given the nature of everything that's happened to them. Colleen gave misinformation on purpose, and Micah saw this, to a tourist wanting to get to the lake for the tugboats and send them east instead of west. And their first memory of Colleen that they can recall, because even when they met, um, Micah, w- Micah probably was even too young to remember meeting Colleen when they were really nice to one another when Colleen first got to town. But what Micah does remember was reading the newspaper about Colleen's parents um, in the Quarantine Quarterly. Awesome. Um, let's go then to uh, Micah and London. So Micah and London, y'all both shared a class once. Um, and London put in the hard work to get a passing grade, like sought help, but he did it himself. He didn't pass it off. He didn't have you do his homework for him. He did it. Um, after the project, though, Micah, you got shoved in a locker and you're not really sure why, but London didn't stop his friends. He was there and he watched. Um, the thing that you really like about London is that he's an absolute goofball. Um, Micah, London, you know, knows about your bisexuality. At some point, in some way in your group project, it came up and you confided in them. Um, somehow, though, there was a miscommunication from the project that you all had, and I don't think you got the grade that you thought you should have gotten. There was something, and um, let's add a little flavor to it while your jock buddies will get pissed. You were pulled from the game. You couldn't compete. Mm. Um, And so they got upset that Micah had done something about it, and that led to them shoving Micah into the locker. Mm. Um, Is the reason you got pulled um, from sectionals. Or uh, from conference, all conference, the conference game. Very cool. Um, and uh, now, uh, let's say after that, now your relationship's a little rocky. Um, you have been calling uh, Micah plain Jane because you wear uh, mannequin outfits. Cool. Um, up next. Uh, <laughs> it's so funny to me. Yeah. It's so funny. <laughs> We'll do uh, Colleen to London. Um, uh, You're impressed that he is self-made and sociable, that he's pretty chatty, especially you all related. So it's like, is it the genes? Probably not something else. Um, His vein, he's vain and paranoid, and it makes it seem that he would do anything to protect his fame. Um, And that scares you a little bit. Um, But he's also your cousin, and you look out for him. You would go as far to stop rumors um, and like send him letters from a distant, um, yeah. And then reverse, London to Colleen. Colleen sent a letter to London, um, felt he was appreciated as a human and not just a list of accomplishments. London believes the amount of money Colleen has had made a um, made it difficult to connect now. Like there, there's just too much money to talk across. Um, and he sees, everyone says that Colleen is really nice. Everyone thinks that they are very sweet, but London sees through the fake sincerity. They know that it's all a front, maybe because of the pain of losing their mom and dad and like struggling to get through that, but knows they aren't truly being nice when they're being fake nice. And that rubs you the wrong way. Um, Cool. And now let's go to the rest of Clyde's interactions. Um, So the first one was Clyde and Colleen. Um, Colleen knows something about Clyde's baby mama, but she know she knows why she's not around. Whatever that reason is, you know it. Uh, and Clyde, on the other hand, knows Colleen's for money and willing to play various cards to provide for his family. Um, then we've got Clyde and Micah. Clyde knows that Micah's got a big public feud with Sparky. Um, don't know where it started from, but there is beef with a local hero, DJ. Micah sent so many letters about the Archie Peach farm conspiracy, and Spica just doesn't give it any light of day. Um, and then Micah and Clyde. Um, did I? Do we do that one? Oh, we might not have. Um, I don't think we did. Uh, perfect. This is this is why we uh, review. Uh, give me one roll, and we'll add it to the list. Is that me rolling? Uh, no, that's uh, uh, okay. Latia. Yeah. Um, What'd you get? A one? On, I got a one. What is that? Uh, I'm typing. Do you mind reading the question for me? It says, uh, what good thing have you heard about this character that you can't believe is true? Mm-hmm. Um, what 
good thing. Hmm. Well, no, it's kind of obvious that he's a, a good father to his, to his daughter, so I'm not going to go there. I mean, uh, yeah, it looks I mean. like it, it. It looks like it to to. For some reason, this is the one thing that Micah believes is true. Mm-hmm. Um, I. It could be something as much as like. Micah was the sole designer of the haunted house. Like he he designed it, and you don't think that's true, or like something like you can because he does work at the peach farm, right? Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Oh man. Mm-hmm. Uh. So yeah, you are. <laughs> You're really Archie. Uh, wow. wow. <laughs> You never see them in the same place. You never see them right, at the yeah. same place. I never, wow. see, I never see Archie and Clyde in the same place. I love this conspiracy. <laughs> what a conspiracy theory. Oh my God. You're the new Archie. Oh, the new Archie. Man. Like, Archie. like I'm Archie's like apprentice. Like, yeah. Oh. oh my God. What even better if Archie oh has God. never been the same person and the person he has to kill every year, he takes their soul. <laughs> Oh uh, no, you're in danger. You're in danger. <laughs> danger. I like that. Ar- oh this Archie God. rumor is so good. <laughs> I, I love it. Old man Archie. Clyde is old man Archie. But is Archie really an old man? I know. He is Archie. Or he, I'm writing he could that be down. An, he could be an eternally old man. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Archie is Flemeth confirmed. <laughs> <laughs> Like he he he, he could have founded like uh, Corrington. That's know? oh the one of the original right. settlers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh man. Very dope. Uh, I mm-hmm. love all of this. So now that we've got all of these sort of done, um, let's compete. The, basically, let's do the finishing touches on our characters. Um, so for this, are going to be motivations, fears, backpacks, and last name. Um, so let's start with full names. Now that we've got this all sort of figured out. Um, what are your full names? What's uh, wh- and you can name them in your character sheet, so we got that. Um, but yeah, what's your first and last name? Mm. Last names are so hard. And last names are. Hard. I know. I would I even think, my, yeah. um, maybe because y'all are cousins, uh, Colleen and uh, what's it called? Uh, London, London share a uh, share a last name. London, what were you feeling for yours? Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking his name was gonna be. Uh, London Lancaster. London Lancaster. You are a British dude. What are you doing yeah, in upstate New London York? Stuff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Who left you behind on a family trip? I don't know, but that's what we got going. Heck yeah. I love that. London Lancaster. I'm here for it. I was going to say Fouché. Oh, Ooh. Colleen Fouché. How do you yes. spell Fouché? F O U C H E R. F O U C H E R. Ooh, I like. I thank you for. I'm gonna. I'm gonna put the, the pronunciation, on next to mine because I'm gonna need that. Uh, fun fact that is actually a family name from my history. Very Ooh. cool. Ooh. From I like Louisiana it. Fouches. Ah, okay, okay. That's so. The, that's why it's got that weird French influence a little bit. Very dope. Mm-hmm. Uh, cool. Let's uh. We, Reef, uh, Latia, you uh, guys know? Clyde Rutherford. Clyde Rutherford. Oh, what a rugged. His hands are rough, dude. Uh, no. <laughs> like a rock. Oh, like a rock. Oh, my God. Uh, Very good. I knew. Uh, okay. No, and then, oh, my God. I'm bad at it. Uh, um, I wanted something that was like stuffy versus the still kind of simple. Um,. Mike, uh, <laughs> uh, Mike, uh, can I say something that's hmm. like jumping in my head? Heck yeah, go for it. Kensington. For whatever reason, Micah Kensing- Kensington. Yeah, Kensington. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. I'll, I like it. Mm-hmm. Kensington. Perfect. And we've got our group. We've got London Lancaster, Colleen Fouché, Clyde Rutherford, and Micah Kensington. Um, 
let's the next part is going to be um, a little bit uh, we're going to do some writing and so i want to give you guys some time to think about this for motivation write down something that strongly motivates you it might not be the thing that drives all of your decisions but it certainly drive it should certainly drive most of them especially the big ones um it could be a specific motivation like with clyde um i'm going to protect my daughter at all costs or it could be more general like hey i want to look cool or i want to learn um or it could have to be doing with like concealing information um like don't let others find out that my business is failing or don't let my children learn that i killed their father wow that's a crazy specific suggestion that this book gives <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> where's this going wild uh th this this game allows you to create whatever narrative you want uh which is very fun um but if appropriate you can share these with these players but most likely you can just share this motivation with the gm so i'm gonna give you all a little bit of time um i'm gonna put let's say uh three minutes on the clock um and just write down your motivations in chat while they're writing that down, feel free um, to put any questions that you have for me about the system or anything like that into the chat. Um, and with that, let's put some writing tunes back on. Oh, nice. Peaches have never been more dangerous and you're absolutely <laughs> right there. <laughs> How do we spell our town's name again? Uh, I have it written down. It's C O R R I N G T O N. Thank you. You're very welcome. Hey, you know what the great thing about this stream being sponsored by Blue Microphones is? I've got a uh, great mixer feedback as I listen to these wonderful tones play back on this delightful <laughs> Yeti X. Um, if you haven't get a chance to use it, I highly recommend it. Uh, once again, <laughs> like sincerely, thanks a lot uh, to uh, Blue for sponsoring this stream and this campaign. We have a lot of fun. Um, and Joel, thank you so much. This has been uh, a blast to do. That was beautiful. <laughs> that was so good. I, I, I worked in radio. I, I, I can do this all. <laughs> <laughs> thank you tk Ew. um it, it so i'd say it is and it isn't like uh fifth edition in that you have specific skills that are sort of line up that you can use them there aren't modifiers for them you just roll die that are associated with it um so that makes it a little bit different um and I think the biggest thing that sets it apart for me is truly, as you've been seeing, the world building and the collaborative storytelling. As we get into the game as well, there's going to be a lot more moments where I'm... Um, one of the biggest things is, like D&D, &D, there's going to be challenges. There's going to be skill checks that you're going to have to react to. Um, but failing a skill check doesn't necessarily uh, mean you um like fail like i in D, D, it's like hey um it's a strength 15 check to try to break down the door and you get a 12 you bounce off nothing happens um what could happen is uh let's say the characters try to hack a computer um but they aren't able to it might mean that they have to seek out a specific npc to help them with it or and that character might in turn inadvertently give them a clue that helps them puzzle out a mystery so it's like you're never going to be dead-ended by failing a role it's just going to shift the story in a certain way um also one of the best things about it is you get to earn these things called adversity tokens um and adversity tokens are um, an in-game currency that you that you get from failing roles but then allow you to um, activate certain strengths it, it makes you make certain moves um it really allows you to define your character in a very interesting way um and then the last thing I'll say that really sets it apart is what you can also do in this game is instead of rolling, um, depending on the action, you can take half your die roll. The, there are going to be challenges and stat checks that come your way called planned actions and snap decisions. For a planned action, I can say I set the difficulty at 8. Um, mm -hmm. Instead of rolling a die for it, you could just use your d20 tat and get a 10 and just like just pass on it and you're like oh i already oh. did it because of this and we'll explain and talk about it um or if you want to roll you could try rolling for something else um snap decisions though you have to roll you, like you can't do that um the nice thing about adversity tokens though is you can also use those 
to bump up a roll. So if you like fail something and you want to add it, you can use adversity tokens um, for those moments. But yeah, um, I hope that explains it a little bit. Um, how are we folks feeling about motivation? Are you feeling ready? Mm -hmm. All right, yep. awesome. Yeah. Let's turn down the tunes and we'll get right back into it. Um, feel free, chat, to keep asking questions. I'll do my best to answer them as we go through it. We'll even make a little bit of time at the end um, as we get there. Um, but yeah, so we got our motivations. Um, does anyone want to share theirs or do you all want to keep them private for now? Uh, I'll share mine. Cool. Uh, so uh, Clyde's motivation is, uh, you know, originally he was overlooked. Um, now he's just seen as guy with kid. Mm -hmm. um, and his motivation is to be defined as something else. So he wants to be known as something beyond, you know, I'm just a young guy with a kid. Like he wants to be known for something. So he's constantly striving to prove himself to um, be seen as a useful sort of like member of this community yeah absolutely i love that i go. thought of oh, oh no go no no go ahead tanya uh, no i was gonna i was gonna say i i made a I picked a motivation but i feel very much like my character's inadvertently turning into batman <laughs> hey Wealthy parents die. You've got you're looking out for the city under the dark of night. I love it. Yeah, right. So I may change my motivation. So for now, I'm going to keep it undercover. Heck yeah, I like that. Definitely Batman. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Batman. <laughs> That's why none of you see me in this mysterious hooded figure mm -hmm. at the same time anywhere. Are you the leader of the rivals? Is that your job? Are you the leader of the gang? <laughs> like, like you get picked up by Alfred. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Could be, but then I'll have to. The, then uh, Colleen may have to visit you. <laughs> oh, <very laughs> okay, awesome. Um, uh, Latia? So, uh, uh, I forgot my character's name and I'm looking right at it. Micah has <laughs> no. lived in, um, Micah has lived in Corrington her whole life. Her family has lived in Corrington their whole life. Mm -hmm. There, she is absolutely convinced every single one of Corrington's rumors is based in truth and she's going to get to the bottom of it. Very cool. I like like if they're you, everyone thinks they're conspiracy theories, but you know they're real. Um, and because people doubt it, you drives you even more. I love that. <laughs> Very dope. Um, okay, and then the neck. Uh, Brandon, do you want to share Landon's motivation? Yeah, I put down that London, he. Sorry. Yeah, he wants to leave town and start a new life to get away from his past. And the other thing is that he wants to be the best athlete possible because he hopes to do it professionally. I love this. And like, this is coming at the time of, I'm gonna, I just wanna see, um, um, like, when was, yeah, do, so um, what's it called? This is the time when um, Bo Jackson is really big. You know what yeah. I mean? This is the 80s. He's, he's the first like two sport athlete that's like really crushing mm -hmm. it. Um, that could have been like some sort of inspiration for y'all. Like you aren't defined by one sport. You're an athlete. And what that means is a way out, a way of success. Um, I love that. That's very dope. Um, cool. All right. Next thing that we're going to do is this is also um, something that it's going to be a little bit of writing on your end um, is your fears. Now, unlike uh, flaws, these are going to be somewhat important mechanically. So you want to think about what it is that scares you and there'll be some mechanical implications for this fear that'll be addressed in like i said planned actions and snap decisions so like if you're scared by something you might not be able to like quickly think of something in a situation and you might have to react instead um but in terms of role playing the fears you uh in in terms of role playing the fears you want to of course avoid them um and when faced with them you'll behave a little more irrationally um Ultimately, what you fear in the game, though, is up to you all. Uh, children, for example, usually fear things that rationally they shouldn't fear and don't fear things that they ought to. They're more likely to walk up to a stranger covered in blood to make sure they're okay than they are to open up their closets in the middle of the night. Um, and just in general, we don't have any kids, um, so we can sort of move on. But generally, children fear the unknown and what they can't see. Teens... We all remember it. It's all over the place. Uh, some teens are still scared of the things that scared them as kids, but they'll tend to be very tight-lipped about these fears. 
and no teen wants to admit that they're still scared of the dark, though teens are more scared of social isolation, losing friends, or embarrassing themselves. Um, but right. sometimes more mature th- teens or those who have lives have been rough will have more fears like an adult. So I'm going to leave that for uh, Brandon and Latia, what your fears are in that way can kind of lead it. Um, for our two adults at the table, uh, Sharif and Tanya, few adults have fears that children have, and most of them aren't worried about the kind of things or social things that concern teens. Rather, um, they're typically afraid of things um, being taken away from them, whether it's their families, their homes, or their livelihoods. Um, some adults also fear realistic things gone wrong, um, and there's nothing uh, there's nothing saying that an adult can also can't be afraid of something that most adults aren't. Um, it's up to you, however that displays and builds itself out. So I'm gonna give you all just a little bit more time um, to groove and uh, plan out your characters. Um, okay. And I'm gonna go back to chat and uh, answer some questions. All right. I have it, it's so silly though. <laughs> You're gotta like lock this. No, I, was, I like that these are common fears as as much as that they they can be common fears as much as they can be like existential fears. Oh, absolutely! Uh, it's a fun thing about this game because then uh, how it manifests itself can be really a good time. Um, mm. but, you know, you're welcome, Raving Sock Monkey. I'm glad you're having a good time. I really love the system. It's really fun and it's cool to build out with people that you like playing with. And, dude, I'll be real, my uh, back staircase doesn't, like, the power went out and the light, it had no light, and I for swore I saw a face in the darkness, and you can't tell me anything otherwise. Um, so, Magikarp RPG, I, I'm not going to shame you for it. <laughs> I still, um, I have a very irrational fear of the light switch in my garage, because... <laughs> yeah once I went to turn it on and there was a house centipede sitting on top of it. Oh. And, um, no, thank you know, you. Con- con- content, content warning bugs. I'm super sorry. But yeah, I don't like house centipedes at yeah. all. No, thank so, you. <laughs> they're not there to be liked. <laughs> <laughs> they, they shouldn't be there at all. Yeah. Do you feel uh, good to talk about fears, y'all? Yeah, let's do it. Uh, sure. I'm still fleshing well, them out, but I'm no, yeah. cool to talk about. We can get you. We can get you less. And also, these fears, um, if you don't want to talk about them, uh, I just need to know as uh, your game master. But for now, um, we can just sort of. If you want to talk about them, we can. Um, but yeah, uh, we had uh, who went first last time? I think it was uh, was it you, Tanya, or was it uh, Sharif? Uh, I think it's yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, well, then, do you want to go first with your fear? If you said that you kind of knew your fear. If you want to, uh, let me ask, do you want to share your fear? Yeah. Me? Yeah. Or Sharif? Uh, uh, Tanya playing Colleen. Do you want to share okay. your fear? Um. So this may be weird yeah. and it would be irrational. Mm-hmm. Um, but late night phone calls. Late night uh, phone calls. Partially because, you know, when she got the call about her parents, oh. it was super late at night, mm-hmm. and she was alone in a dark, this big dark house, mm-hmm. and normally she doesn't get phone calls like that. Yeah. So anytime the phone rings, like at an odd time of the evening, it kind of freaks her out. So uh, I'm going to out my age a little bit here. But uh, in uh, when 9-11 happened, I was in fourth grade. And when that happened, I remember the school announcements did not come on. And then any time the school amou- announcements would not come on for whatever reason, I was terrified that it was like a national disaster. So like definitely, definitely vibe that association that that might happen. I like that. Very cool. Um, well, I, I threw it. Sharif, you sounded like you were ready. Um, what is your fear if you want to share Oh, my fear is eating cookies while I have to talk. <laughs> um, no, my fear. Um, my fear is Archie. So, 
as I said before, uh, Clyde works, um, you know, kind of like to make some money on the side mm -hmm. um, at the peach farm. Um, and uh, old man Archie. Um, well, I, well, I'll say it's it's a general fear of um, uh, establishment and like other adults mm -hmm. because Clyde feels like the other people that he used to hang out with put him in the position as the adult mm -hmm. or the older kid be because of April, mm -hmm. but the adults put him in the in the perspective of being like too young to really know what's going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's kind of like in the middle where like no, you know, so like he is definitely, um, you know, fears um, being put in that box. And like right now, Archie is definitely putting him in that box. So so like that general fear right now is channeled through um archie archie i like that very cool very very cool awesome uh latia or brandon do you want to go next um i wrote for fear uh since he's you know thinking as a teenager yeah. he has a fear of growing old um and with his current situation with his sexuality he is very confused and he he has a fear of not knowing how to love someone. Scared of oh, growing yeah. up and how to show affection as his real self. I like that. Now uh, I want to give London a hug. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and then Micah, wh what are you scared of? If you don't want to share, you don't have to, but. No, it's, this is fine. Yeah. Um, she's scared of, I, I pulled on my own fear of house centipedes. <laughs> Uh, she's scared of raisins. Scared of ra uh, This isn't this isn't a rational fear. She okay. bit into a chocolate chip. She bit into an oatmeal raisin cookie that she thought was a chocolate chip cookie as mm -hmm. a kid, and the taste was not very good. I like that. Micah is scared of raisins. <laughs> and um, go ahead. Uh, no, it's good. Oh, she's scared of uh, deep water. So when she goes swimming, she won't go super far out mm -hmm. um and then um with her parents being gone so frequently she's afraid that one day they won't come back won't come back perfect okay we've got uh we've got your fears we've got your motivations squared away colleen's scared of late night <clears throat> phone calls because uh her parents who passed um that's how she found out cloyd is afraid of archie because particularly like he is uh, like everybody um, putting him into a box and not allowing him to prove that he isn't a kid anymore. Um, he's kind of not defined by his past, but is trying to do something more. And Archie is limiting him. London is scared of growing up and how to show affection to his real self. And Micah is scared of raisins, deep water, and uh, afraid your parents won't come back. Perfect. I love this. Um, and then the final touch, I want to I wanna just do this. We're going to talk about trope-specific questions, and then I want you to give uh, character descriptions so the audience can sort of think about what your characters look like. So think about that um, while I also ask, this is the last thing, um, major, like, kind of big thing. What is in your character's backpack? And this can be literally and figuratively. So basically, what are items are you never without? For children or teens, these might be literally in their backpack. Or for adults, this might be what's always in the trunk of your car. Like, what do you always have on you? Ultimately, though, they're wherever would make the most sense for you. Um, but figuratively speaking, the backpack is also a good place to list advantages that you have over other people. While this doesn't have to consider all the ways that you are privileged, it would be a good place to think about more intangible resources that are at your disposal. So Colleen um, never has to worry about paying the bill for her food, right? Like that that could be something that's in your backpack. Um, or if I let's say if I was playing a character named Giselle, my backpack might indicate that her parents are exceptionally supportive and do everything they can to give her the resources to succeed at school. Um, someone else's backpack, on the other hand, might indicate, um, let's say his name is uh, um, Frank, that his bad relationship with his parents give him a strong sense of self-reliance and ability to do for himself. These intangible resources in your backpack um, won't have a mechanical impact on the game, but they should give you um, your places to turn if you need help in getting out of a problem. 
So this is just mm-hmm. something for you to like draw back on. Like if you're stuck on something, you can look at your backpack and be like, hey, what do I feel comfortable and confident in, in reaching out to? Um, for those intangible things. There might also be just like literal things. Like um, Micah always has a ham radio on them in their backpack uh, for whatever reason. Um, or uh, if we want to get really specific, uh, Clyde's car um, doesn't have a lot of nice things, but he does have an eight track, the way of listening to the future put in there. Um, but yeah, so this one also just to think about, uh, listen to some tunes a little bit as we write it out. But yeah, um, just think what is in your backpack and chat. Once again, okay. feel free to ask questions. I'll be here. Were cell phones weren't a thing in 1989, or were they the giant like, I, like I, you know the bricks? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm gonna look up uh, first appearance. Um, when did cell phones first appear? Uh, so 73 actually. You had bricks, so they were still there. I don't think they were really popularized till like the yeah. mid like like. Late '90s, early 2000s, right? Okay. Yeah, more yeah. consumer, and then yeah. like military. Yeah, this is my the- my grandmother when I was mm-hmm. probably I don't know six or seven had not a big one, mm. but like not not a brick one, but she had like one of the. It was probably about that big, and it flipped. Oh yeah. So they were a they were a thing, but I think. Um, like Intrack says in chat, uh, pagers were more the pagers the thing. were the vibe, and we could even say car phones. Let's put that like yeah. car phones are relevant okay. at this point. Let's l- put that technology there. Um, I I have and for Cherry Drop uh, Rue, I haven't. Um, I don't run kids on bikes often. Um, the last time I ran it was uh, for Gen Con, um, and I had a, a blast. But um, yeah, it's just a really fun system, um, and it. For me and my GM style, I really like it because it's very collaborative, um, and that's it's a fun way to make uh, make games. Um, oh, the Nokia phone, can't, the brick, like the the phone that I put through my washing machine twice and still ran. Yeah, that came <laughs> out in 1987. Wow, that's impressive. Uh, <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. So yeah, I I, I definitely remember. We had beeper stores, and they did sell phones, but no one mm-hmm. had them. Like they were on, because like you, you. I remember the plans as well at that yeah. time. Yeah, like, um, that's five that's... minutes a month, and you could only call local. Like right. if you called another area code, you know, it was ridiculous. I feel that. Cool. Uh, how we how we doing, y'all? Feeling? Uh, I'm just yeah, gonna get a check in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Good. Although I feel more and more like I'm mimicking what Micah would do versus <laughs> what the loner weirdo would naturally do. What? Well, do what you want. I'm the trope. Off on you. I'll be. Re- I'll be real. The trope is just there to get yourself started. Like if you feel Colleen leaning into a little bit more of this identity, run with it. I would much have that than um, feeling like you're pigeonholed to the trope. Oh, I know. I just feel like as I'm typing stuff, I'm like, oh, I sound more like I'm like a conspiracy theorist and paranoid. You know what's crazy is that could be why Micah is like the way they are, though. They could have picked it up from like the one person that they uh, yeah. like their role model. Right. Like that could be that could be the vibe. But we'll think about it. Sit on it. You got we got some time. Uh, oh, my God. I like this. This is very fun. Uh, cool. So, um, that is, we got our backpacks settled. Um, do you guys want to share what's in your backpacks? Uh, I'll share, I'll share one thing. Cause I oh, think yes. it's really cool. Um, so we were kind of mentioning the, as far as like the conspiracy theory goes, like the, the Pepe Silvia, like wall of red string. Yeah. Um, Micah has a scrapbook of, Corrington Quarterly articles that are like, you know, for for lack of a better word, like highlighted and like 
things have been circled where she's like this is clearly about the peach farm uh -huh. this is about the you know the haunted house this is you know she's got this big old article this big old like scrapbook of like things that she has collected probably over the last i say she's she's picked this up probably really hard over the last five years or so heck yeah um that's just full of everything that is like corroborating her awkward conspiracy theories about the town i love it i love the scrapbook like it's got to be somewhere right you got it like you you it's almost like your your holy text you can like script it like hey if you look back on this day and mm -hmm. very cool i like that um uh let's see uh brandon what is something that's in your backpack that you want to share yeah i felt like it's kind of simple but uh no, no, he has a, a journal um several packs of gum uh -huh. um <laughs> and a map very dope a map a journal and several pa yeah the breath has to be fresh you never know mm -hmm. who you're going to be chatting with i like mm -hmm. that uh and then clyde <laughs> What's in your? Is it a backpack? Is it a trunk? Is it a duffel bag? What? What is it? Uh, it's a it's a duffel bag. It's a duffel bag. Um. Yeah. So, uh, uh, Clyde. Um. By the way, who has a uh, like he has other people take care of April. Mm -hmm. Um. So he's often not with April, but he still has uh kid stuff. Yeah. You know, clothes, uh, first aid kit, all that kind of stuff. Uh -huh um but the main thing that he has that he really likes um is a frisbee uh so he keeps a frisbee uh with him um because he like always wants to you know in in, in his quest to like not be kind of held back or or to be known for other stuff he's trying to teach himself different sports very cool um so like especially since his suspicions of london of uh cheating uh in london sport he's like hey i want to like you know i want to try to get up so he's you know fr frisbee is like his like current thing like his current sport that he's uh, yeah. trying to do i know this isn't the vibe but there's a part of me that's like hey i need to get my ged i know i'm 25 but put me on the high school team let me just like crush these 16 year olds real fast <laughs> uh <laughs> I, I don't i don't think that's about i'm i just like <laughs> vibe, i'm just writing uh, i'm just writing a comedy scratch in my head right now like that thank you for that inspiration uh um, yeah that sounds like a like an adam sandler movie or oh, something yeah, yeah, yeah i think that scene was in <laughs> billy madison somewhere yeah like a, <laughs> yeah uh awesome and then uh let's go to colleen colleen what is in your backpack and what is your backpack if, if it's, uh yeah. her backpack is really the trunk of her car. I'm trying to think of what would she drive? Like her one thing that she's kind of flashy about is her wheels. Mm. Um, and so she's got like a classic car, but she keeps it in perfect running condition. Mm. And um, so she's got a go bag, cash, copies of everything yeah. just in case. Well, you're, you're ready to, you're Ron Swanson. Wow out of here i love this. passports <laughs> yeah. like she's ready because she's determined basically yeah. if one more bad thing happens in her life she's like deuces f this money i'm out that's what they make <laughs> debit cards for if debit cards existed then <laughs> oh, or bank you. books <laughs> oh like oh, oh my god we saw bank books back then you you have a checkbook that you're balancing like you you are doing that oh, you're <laughs> balancing <laughs> yeah sweet I love like, that. Give me that checkbook. <laughs> and she, she's she got one of those Nokia phones, but nobody knows about it but her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's only in the go bag. It's only when no yeah. push comes to sub. I like that. Dude, that's perfect. Um, well, that is, guys, that's everything that sort of defines um, your character that we sort of went through. Uh, we built the world. Um, obviously, there were some trope-specific questions that I gave to you all that were in um, your trope that you can answer as you will. Uh, feel free to like fill those out for you just so you know what that is. But um, I think this is a great time. Let's describe our characters. Let's do physical descriptions. Um, some folks it can get a vibe off of that. Um, and for this, I'm just going to go back to the original round robin. Uh, let's start off with Clyde. What does Clyde look like? Uh, Clyde is... Um... Clyde Rutherford. I'm sorry. First and last name. Clyde Rutherford. Yeah. Right? yeah. I mean... Put some respect on my name, please. <laughs> um, Clyde, uh, he's uh, pretty tall. Um, you know, he's he's uh, probably like I'd say six three or so. Okay. 
Um, so he's fairly tall, um, but as I said before, not really a sports person, but everybody assumes that like he is. Um, scraggly hair. Um, I guess if you, if you had to compare him to someone that you probably know, I'm thinking like Shaggy. Okay. From Scooby Doo. So he's tall. Um, you know, uh, his like his like hair is kind of all over the place. Um, he wears like uh, he he has like a various di- different colors of beanies mm-hmm. um, that like he wears. Um, and he's um, his hair is all over the place, but he always has kind of like a like a clean shaven uh, like his facial hair mm-hmm. like like always looks like it is on point. The the hair might be. The hair on top of his head might be wild, but his face yeah. is always yeah. shaved. Yeah, face is always shaved, always super clean. I like that. Awesome. Uh, Tanya, would you lo- would you be so kind as to describe Colleen? Sure. Colleen's about, you know, 5'5", five, five, uh, medium brown skin. And she's got, you know, like the two uh, thick braids. Latia probably knows exactly what I'm talking about, where you like braided your hair in the two parts. And, uh, you know, even though she's in her early 20s, she still has, like, the, um, the ball <laughs> things on the ends of her braids. Yeah. Um, you know, nod to her lost childhood uh-huh. and tears. And uh, hazel green eyes. And she's, like, not, she's not super fit, but she she's, like, in that thick in the, like, 70s, 80s fly girl way. Um, and, you know, dresses like a 20 something that has no real aim in life because she doesn't have to work mm-hmm. she's too, she's out of school and she makes a token appearance like once a week somewhere to like do charity but she basically is like a useless rich girl mm-hmm. but oh. has common sense i really want to <laughs> i really want to get into the fact and we I, like we can talk about this after or maybe we can find a reason why is Colleen still in Quarrington? Why why don't she just go to the city? And like I I, I want to chew on that. That that feels that feels I great. got reasons. I uh, got reasons. Okay, okay, okay. I like this. Uh awesome. Let's move on to Micah. Uh Latia, tell me a little bit about Micah. I had to find the picture to describe the hair that I wanted. <laughs> okay. Um, so she is also uh brown skinned, probably five five or five six mm-hmm. um so it's partially so she's got the french braids going in the front and then it like tapers out to like very curly hair like think not quite the picture i pulled up was the girl the little girl from kill bill vivica fox's daughter oh, oh yeah like yeah, that yeah. kind of curl but it's french braided in the front and then it like kind of goes that like there's probably even like bantu knots that lead to the the curly hair behind um so she dresses fashionable but like it's it's off the rack it's not bespoke so Mm -hmm. um whatever that is for the late 80s um her backpack is leather Mm -hmm. yeah it's leather um and it's just like dark brown and um you know, dark brown eyes. She she looks she looks pleasant, but there is like that spark in her eye. I don't want to use the word manic because it's not what I'm going for, but like mm. she's always looking mm. for things. <laughs> Conspiracy. It's not that. it's not yes. wide eyed, it's alert eyes, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. I like that. Very cool. Um and then let's get to London. Let's talk about London. What does London look like? Yeah, so uh, I imagine him kind of like, you know, he has brown skin, but he has blonde hair, but like he has a fade where the, on the fade it it's silver. So he kind of looks cool. like quick silver a little bit. Yeah. Um, he's always wearing his Leatherman jacket. Um, <laughs> always. <laughs> always. Oh. But like he's known for like the graphic tees that he wears. Uh, ah, yeah, I see. So it's like That's some of his favorite bands of uh, the 80s. And, and, and what, what, is, what is he into? Is he listening to like a Twisted Sister? Is he listening to Poison? Like mm-hmm. what? What? And this is something you can chew on and, and take your time with. But I'd love to like yeah. def- define your music stylings a little bit i think he's very into rock which people are very surprised by yeah especially yeah. during the era uh-huh. but yeah he's very into rock very cool. but he he's willing to listen to anything nice. yes i like that well uh, folks that 
is our party. We got uh, all of them described. I hope you all uh, like them. If anyone's a bit of an artist, feel free to make fan art. We love to showcase mm. it and highlight it on our Twitter. Uh, but yeah, that is going to wrap us up for our session zero of uh, Rivals on Bikes. That's us playing Kids on Bikes, sponsored by Blue Microphone. Once again, thank you all so much at Blue for uh, letting us do this awesome stream. Um, yeah, uh, let's go around and uh, let's do some uh, outros. Um, yeah, let's start off with, uh, let's go to Latia. Uh, hi, it's me. Uh, I'm Latia Jaquise, uh, mm-hmm. at Latia Jaquise across all social medias. I am Micah Kensington in this game of Rivals on Bikes slash Kids on Bikes. This was super fun. Uh, thank you, Masood. I'm really excited to actually get into the the game next week. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I'm on I'm on Twitter. I don't have much else going on. This my normal uh, conspiracy to start a dark matter game this evening is not happening. We are taking a very small break, but we should be back doing that next week at uh, six p.m. Central. So. Very good. I'm on Twitter. Come find me. Nice. And then let's go round robin. Uh, let's go to Tanya next. Hey, I'm Tanya. I'm from Tier Everywhere. Um, I have too much going on this week. Uh, no egg on tonight because um, our friends who run it are on a bit of a move, etc. But uh, Tuesday evening, I'm going to be running a charity Dragon Age game with World 20. Thursday night is my regular Dragon Age game I DM over at Wandering DM's channel. Saturday is Dungeon Crossing on my channel and Gary Witta's channel where we combine D&D and Animal Crossing. And then uh, next Sunday, we're back here for an act for actually digging into this world we just all built together. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be dope. I'm excited. There's mm-hmm. a lot of cool stuff to keep in track of, uh, and I can't wait to get back into it. Clyde Rutherford, a.k.a. Sharif Jackson. Uh, tell the folks who you are. Sure, ClydeRutherford.com, which I'm going to set up. <laughs> uh, 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 you can go to SharifJackson.com, S-H-A-R-E-E-F Jackson.com. Link to all my thingies there. Um, my YouTube site, Game Looks Good. Uh, my teaching and tutoring sites and all that good stuff. And I'm Sharif Jackson on all social media networks as well. Um, don't really have anything coming up individually that's not collectively uh, with this group. Um, but, uh, I will say that I had a great time doing some stuff for Jasper's game day recently. Uh, I, uh, D DM'd a fun game called party all the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I played a uh, fun game as well with Michael crit. So yeah. So, um, catch me on the up and up on the tweeters. Heck yeah. And then last but not least, Brandon, tell the folks who you are and where they can find you. Yes. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Brandon. Uh, you can find me on the Twitters at I am Brandon TV. Uh, you can find me on Twitch at I am Brandon. Um, nothing much coming up, but um, yeah, I'm excited to play. Heck yeah. Uh, hey, and it's me, uh, Masood, your GM. Uh, you can find me on the internet at Marudboy, M-A-H-R-U-D-B-O-I. Um, and besides being part of this wonderful group of folks uh, over on Rivals, you can also catch me on Tuesday nights playing Mythic Odysseys of Theros, sponsored by Roll20. Um, it's Things are getting good. We're in Cluster War season finale. It's spicy. Uh, on Thursdays, you can find me on the Indoor Recess uh, crew uh, Twitch, playing Once Upon a Game, where Katie May and I uh, dive into narratively driven video games and analyze them um, with our pretentious caps on and have a good old time. Right now, we're diving into the world of Psychonauts, like truly my favorite game um, from my childhood. I love it so much. Um, but yeah, and then I'm here with Rivals doing awesome stuff. Um, and we're going to be back next Sunday. We've got some awesome stuff lined up uh, in the rest of September and going into uh, October, um, which you can check out on our Twitter. We've got, um, I don't, we can talk about stuff now, right? Like we can definitely show you. Yeah. Can... Everything is, is announced, etc. Yeah. Yep. We're going to be doing some, some awesome stuff for the D and D celebration. We're also doing some cool things for PAX online. Um, mm-hmm. all of those dates and information is over on our Twitter arrivals of Waterdeep. Also there's so much happening. There's so much happening. Um, the biggest thing that's happening, if you don't know, um, we uh, basically worked out a deal where we're now open to be supported by all of you all. If you like this sort of content that we made, if you like uh, and want to see us explore other worlds besides Waterdeep and other game systems, the best way to do that is to go and head over to our Patreon um, and support us there. 
Um, with uh, your support, we can bail out time and our schedule to provide you great content and entertainment. And that's what we love to do. So, uh, yeah, that'd be mm-hmm. awesome. Um, I'm, am I forgetting anything? Or... Um... N- the new season starts September 27th. Yes, uh, the new season of Waterdeep starts September 27th. Uh, be sure you're there, y'all. Um, though I'm sure you won't forget it because you're going to stay here every Sunday between now and then uh, to keep up yeah. with Rivals on Bikes. Um, but without further ado, uh, thank you so much for hanging out. Uh, we've been Rivals of Waterdeep, and we'll be back uh, next week. See ya. Well, don't go anywhere. Oh, don't... We're gonna raid... Oh yes, oh, yeah, yes. Rating. please. We're yes, yeah, yeah. Don't ra- uh, Don't go anywhere. We're gonna go raid Critical Bard. Um, please come hang out with us. Oh, oh, okay. It did work. I met. I thought I messed it up. <laughs> Rivals raid. We have no emotes yet, so yes. use your heart emotes. Hashtag and, uh... Rivals raid. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, I was like, we have no emotes yet. I was about to tell people to use an emote. Yeah. Uh, and CB has launched a new show. Today's the first day, so let's see oh. what they're doing. Nice. Yep. Yeah. So uh, well, let's raid now. Let's do it. Thank All you right. guys. See ya. See ya. See y'all next week. Bye. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>